Good evening, one and all. My name is Peter, and it is my honor to welcome you to the Strife of the Chosen. You may notice that we are not trapped by hope, as Trapped by Hope is on a temporary hiatus as Mr. M.E.D.M. is away performing in actual real life for the next couple weeks. In the meantime, we're going to be playing a trio of Avernus theme adventures that uh, we'll be playing over the course of the next three, maybe four weeks, but probably three. So here with me... For this hellishly good time, our, um, our good friends, we have Alias Prime, we have Jade, we have Elena and David. We'll introduce their characters there in a moment, because if I just said their character names, you would have no idea what I was talking about since we haven't met them yet. But we'll get to that. Um, we will also have more of the Trapped by Hope crew joining us next week. Uh, the cast is going to shift a little bit over the course of the next um, couple weeks with these adventures. And um, also another special guest that's going to come in and uh, play with us. So uh, lots of exciting stuff to come on the next couple weeks as we uh, play this little mini series here. Well then, my friends, we will begin our tale as all wonderful, important tales um, begin in hell. And we set the scene in a place in Avernus called the Wandering Emporium. A cluster of war machines sit in a circle. Large chains support sort of drifting pieces of fabric. Within this terrible, amazing market, devils do business. Extraplanar creatures, merchants from every far realm come and exchange under the um, protection of the all-powerful Mahadi. Recently come to the Wandering Emporium is a trader named Fai Chen, a man from the eastern regions of uh, the Forgotten Realms. His cart pulled by a small donkey and then a small child sitting on the back of it. Fai Chen was admitted to the Wandering Emporium, as he always is, and set up a small tent within the bazaar from which he began to peddle smaller, less important um, magical items. As we begin our story, a the small child whose name is Dara sits in the middle of this tent. It is lavish. There is this, there are incense blowing about within here. The oppressive heat of Avernus still lingers, but it's not quite so bad in here, especially considering the cushions, the attractive lighting, and the lavish rugs and fabric that make up the tent itself. However, Dara seems to take no heed of these luxuries. She sits on a hard wooden bench that looks nearly broken, one leg about to break off, sits back straight, kind of just staring off into space. As Fai Chen is rummaging about one of his many chests of magical items, her little voice says, They're here. The first ones, at least. Um, Shouma. Yes. So um, this Did is a... Uh, sorry, go ahead. Um, in your meditations, strange rumors amongst your monastery we're beginning to spread around um, about this child. The clerics of Ilmater, though well-meaning, 
are still clerics of dogma. Their teachings are established and learned from texts passed down through the generations of their clergy. And you've sometimes felt that wisdom too prescriptive. But the rumors of this child were always different. A wisdom that seemed to come from within, an innate calmness that was centered on Ilmater, but was very different from what you had heard of its church. And as you heard these rumors, it began to sort of obsess your meditation. And you made the long, grueling, interplanar journey down here to the Wandering Emporium to find this child. If you care to explain any more of your motivations in doing so, you may, as if, and you can describe yourself as a small tent flap is pulled to the side and your character enters. So uh, Shoma enters the tent. Um, he's a tall, slender human with dark eyes and hair kind of haphazardly pulled out of his face. Um, he wears light gray sleeveless robes um, with a cowl lined in red. Um, his wrists are wrapped in uh, strips of red fabric. Um, and beneath that, um, there are swirling lines of uh, white colored tattoos that go extend all the way down to his fingertips. And um, there's a half mask made of gray porcelain that's kind of pushed to the side um, beneath the cowl. Um, I, Dara means something real to me, something that is deep and fiery and passionate. And I would rather see that brought to Avernus than something that is rigid and structured and quite frankly, boring. So. Very good. And you see as you enter, almost simultaneously, you it's almost as if there's a house of mirrors effect going on because as soon as you peel back the tent flaps, each corner of the tent simultaneously opens and you see three other figures entering um, at a startlingly synchronized moment. Directly across from you, you see what looks to be an elven figure. Karulas. After your journeys in Candlekeep, your mind was quiet. You were able to relax for a few days, maybe a week, in these halls of knowledge, till you felt the burning sensation again the burning in your mind and the hot whispering command of that fiery voice saying you were needed again. Speak to the sages, descend to the first layers of hell, find the child Dara in the Emporium of Mahadi. Go now. It being the middle of the night was no matter to you as you knew what now meant to your patron. And so you went, spent a false, a small fortune of your previous earning to convince some of these sages to send you all the way down to somewhere so cruel and obscure. Thankfully, a teleportation circle was near. Trip to Avernus was frightening and your fear grew before you saw the Emporium that you might actually just get lost in this plane. But just as the voices, just as the sages said, the Emporium was there before you. And as you found the tent in the center, peeled back the corner and entered just again as three others enter, would you care to describe yourself? Yeah. Um, Carolus 
looks very, very elven, but he's got a tinge of something else. He's actually Yuan-Ti. Um, he has blonde hair, has a gorgeous blue cloak, and this smouldering leather armor, studded leather armor. And um, he comes in holding a book, like a, a real thick tome, and um, looks around, sits down and opens it up, and all you see is just pictures. There's no writing. And yeah, just sits down. Cool. And lastly, Karulas. Or excuse, excuse me, sorry. Uh, not lastly either. Uh, where am I? <laughs> what, what's going on with my brain? Next, the third to part the uh, curtain is a halfling. Marrow, the last few days have been strange. Uh, you know, your trips to Elturel were always a little questionable because of the business that happened there. This one was particularly questionable as you thought, whew, Baldur's Gate's getting a little, something's going on there. I better get out of here to spend some time in the Holy City. You know, those, those, those paladins are, you know, they, they can be a little gruff, but I can always find an alley to sneak away in, in case they ever sniff trouble around me. But this time, suddenly an explosion in the sky and now everything around you is fiery and red and you're in a city that's floating and chained to a hellscape well that certainly wouldn't do um walking um though at the same time you get this itching feeling that this is where you're supposed to be and that but not necessarily in this city and following that um that that same sort of trend you wander through the city uh wander through this city witnessing a great worm um cutting its way through the streets avoiding that uh sort of stumbling through alleyways you come to a point where you see a massive chain leading to the ground a way to safety perhaps you feel this is the way to go you make it about two steps before your foot slips and you find yourself plummeting to a giant river below and around it a a um massive um battle millions perhaps devils demons waging war against one another and you think well time for one last drink and as you bring the flask up suddenly something catches your arm and between your leather armor and the straps, and the bag you wear, you find yourself stuck to some terrible draconic devilish creature. Get off of me! And you find yourselves just spinning in a death spiral all the way down. Get off of me! Get off of me! You get off of me, you counter. And in its desperation, knowing that it will die if it plummets into this river, it makes a deal with you. Ugh, I'll just loosen that strap. I'll fly you to the edge. Ugh, I can't fly. And it makes a deal with you. You both plummet to safety after you loosen one of your straps and glide all the way to the side and then tumble into the hellish dirt. You get up and the devil looks at you with absolute malice, but it agrees to the verbal deal that it's made, <sighs> snarls at you, and then returns to the fray of the blood war. You decide to go the opposite direction and see what seems to be a carnival, a fair, something strange surely there is something to drink in that place and so you stumble in and stumble through this wandering emporium everyone is very rude uh for the most part and uh you do then smell something like incense 
and the faint sound of wind chimes. I wonder what's in there. And as you part the side of the tent at the same time as four others, who do we see entering this same tent? Oh, well, you see a halfling, I'm short, and uh, I've got uh, light hair. And I'm, I'm wearing, although I've got studded leather armor on, kind of over it and around it, I've got what, what would normally be described in, in this world as almost a caretaker or a, what's the word? An undertaker's garb. Very dour and blacks and whites and patches here and there because... You know, it's hard to keep up good appearances. Um, and I, I skitter in a little bit, a little bit upset. <laughs> this is not the right place at all, but this will do. Hello. <laughs> at this simultaneous moment, one more creature enters the tent. Wunkun, am I pronouncing that correctly? Wonkwon. Wonkwon. You have been here for a long time here in the Wandering Emporium. Overseeing the many deals, negotiating, and receiving punishment when some of those deals go not quite as badly for some or just a little too badly for others. You ache to rest, but you remember Ilmater's word and continue. Your people are long lived. And so you go on and on and on in Mahadi's service until one day a strange trader arrives and sets up his tent. You see a look of disgust flash across Mahadi's, Mahadi's face for a moment. He quickly hides that expression and kindly greets the um, magical item trader as he exits his tent after setting it up. They exchange a few words. And then... He turns to you. Well, you can go on. Fai Chen and I have an understanding and he needs your assistance with something. Apparently. Go. And as Fai Chen pulls the um, tent aside for you to enter, you see you are one of four very different adventurers who have come to meet this small child. Now, who do they all see entering? Uh, Wonk One is an old wizened turtle with gray-green skin and hazel eyes. He wears a simple brown robe or tunic. It doesn't cover his shell, just the front. Um, and he has a pair of simple bracelets fashioned out of red woven cord. Uh, he uses a cane, but otherwise he carries no visible weapons and wears no armor. His hands and forearms appear to be encased in liquid bronze, while the sharp claws that extend from his fingers appear to be pure silver. A number of cruel metal spikes and hooks have been driven into his shell and through it. From some of these hang a variety of pouches, a small scroll case, a coil of rope, an abacus, and a hooded lantern. In addition to the spikes and hooks, much of his shell is marred with scratches, cracks, and the occasional burn mark, though the original beautiful mottled browns and greens still shine through in a few spots. As you all come into this point, the child just kind of stares off into the distance, sitting on this solid, uncomfortable-looking little stool, and simply says, You've come to assist me. Are, are, are you the she? I am Dara. Yes, that's she. Yes. Can we get this over with? What do you need? Hmm. 
and the magic item trader comes in and kind of leans against the wall and says, it's been nearly, um, nearly 666 years since the last time the Archduchess Kiros has had a ball. And I need something that she treasures greatly. You're going to go there for me. You're going to retrieve it. It is a terrible item. But I don't... I don't know how. Not yet. But Ilmater has told me that we need it. So I shall get it. Or rather, you shall get it. Yes, you. No, 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 I'm already here. You can go get it. You're going to go get it. And there's something in your mind as she says that, uh, Marrow, that just sort of twists around almost like vertigo or the spins. Some things you're pretty accustomed to, but you feel your personality sort of twist around and you think, yeah, I'm going to go get it. <laughs> Um, at the mention of Ilmater, um, Luwunk One very briefly touches his bracelets before recomposing himself. Um, yes, you've been waiting a long time, old one. Soon you shall see the reason for your suffering and that of others. You are not unseen by the broken one. I, I, uh, understand. Thank you for this message. She nods and turns to, um, to, excuse me, um, new games, um, Elena's character's name, I had them all written down, I can't find it, the... Sorry, you're muted. Could you say it once more again? Shoma. 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 I should change that on the thing. And do you consent to this? I'll consent to do your will. What's the end game? How far does this go? I don't know. My dream ended it. Chalice, the item. When I have it, I believe I'll know more. All it's right. gotten me here at least. Well, one foot in front of the other then. Hey, Meryl, right? Kind of nod towards him to give him a grin. Better with a party than all alone. Did you say your name was Yoma? Shoma. Shoma, that's much better than Yoma. I was uh, scared. Will there be payment? You fire servant. Here. What about payment? All jobs start with a payment. No? Depends on the kind of work you do. Uh, usually I get paid after delivery. <laughs> I met before. This work is much like life. It will end, and then you shall receive your just payment. Well, that sounds ominous. It does. It is the truth of things. It is the way. My just payment usually involves money. Just letting you know. Maybe if we find some stuff along the way, you can slip it in your pack, huh? Well, certainly. We're, we're in hell. What? <clears throat> you are in hell. Indeed. Of course I am. <laughs> Dear child, yes, of course. We're not in hell. 
you you are in Avernus. You guys are so delirious. When you got here, <laughs> yes, a lot of cosplay out there. It was horrid. <laughs> you should go try to pull someone's mask off. See what happens. I did. I got a strap caught. I mean, it's really good construction. They've spent a lot of time on it, but mm -hmm. my goodness, children. Yeah, you're going to have a great time today. I know. <laughs> so This ball is the only time that Kiros displays the chalice. Or so much Faya has told me, and the traitor is just kind of <laughs> sitting there and shaking his head in disbelief. Um, seems to have almost want nothing to do with this. Um, it is the only time it's displayed. This is your only chance. And from what I've told, well, you're going to need an invitation. Where do we get that from? You? <laughs> no. The proprietor here himself, Mahadi, is the only one of rank to receive invitations here. He will likely make you do something to get it. You have to do that. Ilmater's will. And she kind of, it's almost as if for a second she is struck by some type of vision or realization or something. Her body almost shudders and she calms herself. All those souls depend on it. You must make him take you, and you will go. You will be rewarded. Oh, I like that part. Some of you in ways more important than others, as she glances towards... <laughs> the turtle and the monk not so much <laughs> so with so that she Maddie. has simply given you the instruction that there's an item that you must take from an arch devil the item is only displayed once every 666 years at an infernal ball that the devil throws. And today is that day. Invitations are required. Mahadi has them. Let's go find Mahadi then. I can lead you to him. I am quite well acquainted with the master. All right. How long will it take you to walk there? I am not uh, slower than many others. I think you will find it harder to keep up with me. <clears throat> At least within the Emporium. And I look down on his face. He's got any skates on. <laughs> <laughs> Probably just big turtle feet, huh? Yep, just big turtle feet. Are you, um, are you leading the way in that case? I I will in fact lead the way. Yes. Great. Uh, Wong Kwon then steps out and starts to go, and you do see him knowingly going through this sort of maze of tents, chains, hanging fabrics. Um, you think you see the, um, tall, handsome proprietor, um, pontificating to a, some sort of devilish creature in the distance, but you see Wun Kun take a hard right and go a different direction, and, um, just at about that time, you see a, um, some hulking, huge creatures made of, like, fire, um, crossing the way. He seems to know the paths, the patterns of this place in a way that just, uh, that, uh, uh, it just has an understanding of this place that is uncanny. And he, you all bob and weave until you reach 
Mahadi himself, who has just finished some business and then turns around and gives you all a broad smile. Ah, newcomers, welcome to the Wandering Emporium. In case you did not read, there are two rules here. No fighting, no spell casting, no exceptions. Yes? Understood. Very good. Now, may I invite you to dine in Infernal Rapture? You will find no greater food in all of any of the plains. Or perhaps you are in need of magical items or terrible weapons. Perhaps you require something that you could not find anywhere else on any of the other planes, so you have come here. I assure you, everything is available here for a price. How can the Wandering Emporium be of service to you? My, my master, uh, we... What is it, young one? They would like to uh, procure some invitations to a party. What party? Uh, I'm sure there's someone that can be persuaded to give it up. Uh, Kiros is the name of the uh, Archduchess, is the name. Uh, They they wish admittance to uh, Kiros's ball. (laughs) <laughs> Has it been that many centuries already? Ah, it's a boring affair. I'd rather not. Is there anything else we can do for you? I'm sure that like anything else, everything has a price, including an invitation. And what may be boring for someone of your great age and wisdom would be quite interesting for those of us who've only spent a couple decades around the sun. I just got here. (laughs) Hadi seems pleased by the flattery. However, I would still like you to make a persuasion check. Uh, Can I assist with that (laughs) if I am proficient? Potentially... Um, do you say anything besides, I just got here? (laughs) (laughs) Um, not, not for the moment. Can I make my own roll as well? Uh, you can, we'll see how this first one goes. Um, (laughs) okay. Will it be the first roll? If, also, also, there's the first roll, okay. So, you did ask to give the help action. You don't have to speak it, Meryl, but is there a way you would like to add to her statement? You don't have to actually speak it, but if there's a, if you have an idea of how you would like to add to that to help, you can. Uh, um, in in this case, it. dealing dealing with an, an affluent lord, the master of his domain, uh, and someone who's very used to making deals and brokering for things, and mentioned hard to find things like the bones from a gelatinous cube or a thigh bone from a beholder, this type of thing that he's used to dealing with. I'm sure that I would be using all of my best manners and deferential physical movements to court him as a potential buyer. Oh, okay, cool. So you um, do get the sense that the idea of this ball seems a little boring to him, um, but as he's about to dismiss your friend's persuasion check or your new acquaintance's persuasion check, you do bring a few of these things up. Um, It's a bizarre list of, um, that only Mero could rattle off, but uh, you see a couple of them make him almost laugh or he raises an eyebrow and it seems he's considering this situation. Uh, It's been a few years, it might not be as boring as it always is, so. What the heck? So uh, go ahead and roll that persuasion check with mm. advantage. You can okay. try again. Let's see, guys. Nine. <sighs> I'm not persuasive, guys. I don't know why I'm rolling this. <laughs> uh, 
DM bribery as, it is <laughs> as um, the uh, go to for uh, brokered deals for Mahadi. I would have some knowledge of the history of deals brokered between uh, Mahadi and this individual that we're trying to get to the ball of that I've again forgotten the name of and need to write down. <laughs> Uros. That's probably because it's really like a strange name. So it's Q U I R O Z Z. Okay. <laughs> that was not where I thought that was going. Kuroz. Great. Um, would I would I know if there are any outstanding um any outstanding business with queer qu 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 raws? Um So based on your recent, I guess, sort of centuries of experience, uh it's not someone that Mahadi has frequent dealings with. Um, he does have a sort of permanent invitation with plus ones available uh, to this ball. But uh, yeah, that's about that's about it. Though you do know, um, if again, as he has said, everything can be purchased. So you, while you may not um, be able to. Uh, verbally persuade him in this case. It looks like it's not likely based on um, the roles that just happened. You know that you can offer a favor if, and he will most likely use you for something. What that is, it's hard to say. Uh, perhaps a, a, an agreement could be brokered in this particular issue at hand uh his and his demeanor shifts from a look again of boredom as he's almost begun to turn and walk away he turns back and looks at all of you for a uh, moment keen and analytical is his gaze Wonk one kind of re recedes into his shell a little bit at the glance. Come on. I really want to go. Sure we can do each other a favor. Maybe. There is a individual who owes me a great sum. Her name is Galabraga. Good name. She owes me eight soul coins. Oh, it's different here, isn't it? It is quite overdue. So, bring me Galabraga's debt and uh, I suppose I could be persuaded to bring you to the ball of Kiros. Oh. What if she refuses? For Persuade her, one way or another. Kill her. I don't care. Okay. Just get my coins. Where can we find for her? for such a sum, it would be customary to offer safe passage both to and from the ball. Yes, yes. You're going with me. I'm not. Passage with me is, by definition, safe. But perhaps it would be best if we put the deal into writing, as is customary. <sighs> and, and he kind of snaps while he's his saying finger. This, he's already pulling out the scroll case and yep. unclasping it and pulling out sealing wax and a, and a scroll of parchment and I'm... a quill. Who's that for? For, for all of us. I do my best work off the books. I promise. Too bad. Uh, I think that you will find the longer you are here, the better it is to get your deals in writing to ensure proper delivery. And he's already begun to write. Yep. You see 
Mahadi looking to grow a little bit impatient and he snaps his fingers and two imps appear with little quills that start to go down and begin um, uh, drawing uh, sort of halfway down and then further down um, to aid in the drawing up of this contract. Of course. Yes. And it is written in Infernal and has a four spaces for people to sign down at the bottom. Um, the basics, does anyone read Infernal? No, I've got Bissell. Do? Um, uh, Wunkun will tell you that it looks straightforward, offering safe passage in exchange for the return of Mahadi's soul coins from uh, Galabraga. Uh, one, uh, Master, one uh, clarification. Is it just the eight soul coins, or do you require um, the... I do, I do not remember the word that you used. The... Uh, do, does she owe you more in addition? No, just the coins. Very just well. Eight. Just eight. Is it eight written on that? I can't. Eight words. If it had pictures, it's fine. Is it eight? <laughs> it's just eight. Okay, is, does it say that? Don't get contract? your panties on a twist. If, if there's more coins, then we take the coins. Feel free. Take okay. whatever you want. Brilliant. I don't care. Get my coins. Where is she? We, we, sign we and I'll show you. Sign the contract. Oh, I'll sign. Do you all sign? Wonkwen will also sign, yes. A, um, as the pen passes over the paper, you um, see that the parchment begins to bleed and the blood kind of runs down in lines, starts dripping onto the ground before, like a, um, uh, like a pull shade window just <laughs> snaps up into a, um, a uh, circular tube, which he snatches and then places in his coat. Follow me. And he leads you to the edge of the Emporium, the wind of Avernus, hot, dry, and oppressive, can now be felt as he steps just almost to the threshold. He looks around and squints for a moment and then just points off in a direction. That way, a cave. Good luck. And then he turns around Thanks. Uh, okay. and re-enters. Uh, well, let's go. Uh, does it look like there are any uh, mountainy areas, rocky crags off in that direction? That would be a uh, make a perception check. The wind is blowing. It is. Uh... All right. Let's do better this time. Much better. Okay, twenty. Twenty. Um, the the sands are ever shifting, kind of creating this sense of false terrain, almost il- almost mirages of mountains and such dust what you think are hills are dust clouds or perhaps something more sinister but as they as they move you're able to center yourself calm your eyes and calm the analytical part of your mind and simply see the horizon as it is and the static points on it reveal themselves to you and you do see towards where he pointed it was a bit of a general direction but you locate one area that does look to be some sort of rocky crags or small mountain pass just in the distance that way let's go yeah i'm gonna start walking off in that direction all right I'll follow <laughs> Wonk one will follow, and as he steps out of the Wandering Emporium, his mood seems to lighten a little bit. Just slightly. You don't get out much, do you? It shows. Uh, it's okay, no, really. It's okay. My, my master is a 
quite demanding. I do not get much time away or for myself. Well, then you uh, have to get drunk before the day's over. I like drunk. Interest. That's the word. Oh. I'm sorry, you said I have to get drunk. Yes. Before the day is through. If you don't get out I much, you have see. to do all the things. I do not drink often. It's been many years. You're going to be great at this party. Thank you. I hope to be of service. Uh, oh, oh, she's already like, wow, she can move. Let's we around. go. Shoop, shoop up. <laughs> I'm a shoop, dude. Shoop, what? Shoma oh, he, is a he, dude. He. Sorry. It's, <laughs> androgyny is a wonderful thing. It is. <laughs> As uh, the monk I is... I do walk fast. <laughs> sure-footedly... Small eggs. Um, uh, walking ahead, and it looks uh, as if the halfling is stumbling after. Um, Is there... Wonkun, is there a... Uh, did I miss it in the description? Is there a feature about your shell that is interesting? Um, uh, it is. It has a number of uh, metal spikes and hooks that have been driven through it, uh, which he uses to hang various tools yeah. and items, um, though it does not seem to be voluntary that those are yeah, there. Yeah, they do not look to be um, comfortable by any means. Um, you can see bits of fluid sort of just seeping just a little bit from the wounds don't that don't look life-threatening but don't seem to have ever really healed do they and, look like they're pulling on the shell in any way oh uh, no, he's i believe he's able to carry himself but uh mm -hmm. they they don't appear to be attached to each other or putting pressure on the shell they appear to be like just like steel spikes that have been driven into the shell okay. with extreme force. Kind of hang back a little bit to get sort of like slightly from a distance, get a closer look. And then after I'm sort of satisfied at having sort of observed what there is to be observed there, I will head back kind of to my speedy front runner position. Do I notice this? I'm not trying to hide it. Okay. Uh, it it is okay. Okay, you can look. Does it hurt? Yes, though. I endure, as my lord has for many centuries. You carry that suffering well. I have much practice. I like him. As, sorry, I can't hear you, Jade. I was whispering. He was whispering <laughs> crazy. <laughs> so I heard it. He said crazy. I was doing it. As mom. you're looking and hearing this conversation and witnessing the suffering of this turtle, you all begin to feel an immense heaviness about this place. Each footfall takes twice as much effort. <sighs> try to clear your throat like it's just a little dry and find yourself parched every bit of this realm is exhausting as if your existence in it is an offense to its entirety the entirety of its nature it's about an hour two hours by your reckoning even you shuma feel it your body um, which has been brought to, you know, which has been honed by intense training, still feels heavy and awful. In this travel, I need you all to make um, constitution saving throws. Is it a magical effect? It is the very nature of the plane itself. 
So it is not a so magical yes. effect. No. Do we get a bonus, David? Oh, wait. Uh, yes. Here's what it is first. Excuse me. Um, before you roll those, have you rolled already? Nope. No. Nope. No one's rolled. Okay. You do notice that it might be possible to avoid some of the harsher elements by finding a path amongst some of the fissures, crags, and such as you go towards the direction that uh, Mahadi pointed. But it will be difficult. The shifting, unfamiliar nature of this plane is kind of throwing off all your senses. So if anyone would care to make a survival check to try to get you all there with some more care, you're welcome to do so. I, I can First assist check I with that. Delightful. You're both proficient. Go ahead. Okay, cool. Do so with advantage. 22. Ah, very good. I almost skipped that. But um, with the help of Wunkun and Shuma, you are able to find some more shaded, sheltered um, pathways. Some where you're walking on sand as opposed to the hard, almost metallic shale-like rock of the um, of Vernon plane and it's unpleasant but you do not need to make saves versus exhaustion as your path leads you there directly and sure enough opening from the mountainside you see in what looks to be the mouth of a cave there are scraps of uh, perhaps fabric or something maybe that used to be a door it looks like that hang outside of it um, as well as hanging bells that despite the wind do not move at all they are actually wires with multiple bells hanging off of them moving closer you see what suspiciously looks to be a finger hanging off of this fabric and a foot Maybe hanging skin. Oh, they're in the season of things. That's so wonderful. <laughs> You've really got it coming. What? I can't wait to see the look on his face. <laughs> Optimism is a wonderful thing. Hopefully, it too can endure. Would you like to go into the cave that's lined with human body parts first, Marrow? Wouldn't be the first time. Yeah, I'll do it. Awesome. Let's go. I'll follow close behind and keep an eye out for She's potential following dangers. close behind me. I will follow. What is it we're doing here again? Go get some uh, soul coins from this lady. Soul coins. Do we know what soul coins are? Yeah. Coins. Yes. But what? I don't. It's, it's a coin. Coin. That has a soul. <sighs> It'll have a big S on it. That's not true. Is it? <laughs> that's what I was told. I like it better with a big S on it. I think that sounds well, neat. You can make your own coins that have a big S on it. Um, maybe I will make my own soul coin. It'll be mm. me. It'll be my soul coin. Mm. Mm. What do you do then? Yeah. Mm. I would have a hard time deciding whether I wanted to spend that coin. Most likely would spend you for food or drink, or perhaps even lodging. Hmm. So what's in the cave? <laughs> As you enter, um, the bells kind of king, 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 king. Mm -hmm. echo out this strange discordant melody um, and you see the um, the hanging skin fabric leather kind of shudder and uh, what look to be um, almost spectral hands kind of move from them out towards you moving towards your faces never quite touching you The interior is black. 
does anyone have um yes let's say does everyone have dark vision no give me a light 120 <laughs> feet i'm gonna light a torch if no one's got a magic light or anything like that so you know hot shit i light a torch all right a torch is lit revealing the interior of this cavern almost immediately you feel a crunch under your feet looking down bones line the ground like a gravel pathway you might Ooh. find in a city dm i would like to inspect the bones okay sure are they uh, authentic are you looking for a behold of fiber and and can i tell what type of bones they are well are make a not, like you know like like people bones dog bones mm -hmm. Bloody bones. Milk bones. <laughs> well, <laughs> make a uh, um, nature check. I guess survival would be um, applicable too. Ooh, a five. They are mostly white bones. Some of them are gray bones. Some of them are broken bones. But uh, they are, uh, you cannot identify animal from humanoid. As you're identifying with a roll of bones, a five. Um, huh? From the back of the group, you hear a slight cl clanking sound. And then you hear Wonk one say, uh, Would you like a hooded lantern for lighting the way? Oh, it's probably better be than a torch. I look down, you have one? the whole floor just full of bones. And I'll, I'll hand it up the line. Uh-huh. It does appear to be that way, mm. yes. I don't like the look of that. And Carolus is, from the waist down, just starts going invisible with a gust of wind and starts looking like a genie of a bottle. And starts floating. Oh no! Really? This is this is normal. This is all all the best necropolis. I'm not this. letting my feet touch that. Why not? They're dead. This is disgusting. It's the unnatural. Bones. You walk on them, then I'm not. And I just. I am walking glide, on. Glide about, glide over them. You, you have not like many they're, of It's them. not like they're beetles or snakes or something. They're pretty little food. They're dead. You have many of them inside of you. I carry mine on my back. It is not so unusual. No, but walking into a place with just full of them is... Have you never? It is a little unusual for those not used to Avernus's peculiarities. Hmm. I did just come from <sighs> Candlekeep, which is full of Ponzi wizards. Mm. Do they have hats? All of the hats. Are they Ponzi hats? Very Ponzi. I've never met anyone Can't who's trust Ponzi anyone who doesn't a Ponzi have a hat. hat. Yeah. Agreed. Can't trust them. Marrow. Agreed. Can't trust them. How far does this cavern go full of bones? Uh, you crunch your way down. Um, uh -uh maybe about 40 feet that winds down into the rock that begins to drip with some type of thick, oily substance, almost like black, tarish like ichor. And then you hear a, um, a voice kind of echoing through in your deepest, darkest dream, nameless terrors make you scream. Feel it creeping, crawling near. Time to face your greatest fear. <laughs> Come to Galabraga has the four soft skins. Yes. Can I see her? <clears throat> coming around a 
corner, the cave opens up and you do see a few more bones piled up into um, piles. And uh, this area is more open. Uh, bring us over there one moment. I've, 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 I've dealt with people like this before. They're very eccentric. You have to really be careful. Don't offend them. And a few bodies that look a bit more freshly dead. And as you oh. come nearer, um, ah. Shuma, resize you. I'm so large. Okay. <laughs> you notice immediately, here at least to start, Actually, what is everyone's passive perception? 22. 15. I'm looking at a 20. Uh, 15. You have a 20, though. Wow, you guys have great passive perceptions. You see what look to be cracks in the floor, almost looking like sort of a square pattern. Um, mm. To be a this where the the um, bones or something fall down into little cracks it's either a pit or a trap door or mm. something like that here 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 and here okay uh, I'll, uh, I'll put my little arms out and stop everybody but... who's to galabraga come um, We're here to pick up some soul coins. A debt. I, I whisper under my breath, Ilmato guide us, and cast guidance on myself. That's Sixteen <gasps> of them. Uh, I, I'm going to step forward um, kind of casually, and as I do, I'm at least going to make it up to here. And as I do, I kind of want to drag my foot against the ground along the outer outside of that um, pink area to make it clear... Um, to those with lower perceptions um, where that is so they can see it. Um, Just displayed an image of what you see ahead of you, Galabraga. Mm. She is kind of hunched over and picking at sort of a large festering boil on her forehead. Her eyes kind of going separate ways as um, she's just looking around this cavern. Soul coins, soul coins, greedy, 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 greedy children. Not Meet for spooky us. Spooky ends. M Master Mahadi calls in his debt. Hmm. Hmm. Gala Braga owes Mahadi. But Mahadi. Mahadi liar too. Mahadi's deal specify Mahadi must collect. He has come sent closer, in his pretty. Place. What did uh uh what did you say? Sorry, Bunkun? Uh He has sent us in his place. Mm. Mm. Contract says Mahadi himself. Contract says Mahadi himself. Oh, that, that, that's fine. Just show us the contract. We'll authenticate it. And if that's what it is indeed the case, we'll be on our way. Indeed, I inspect many of Mahadi's contracts. If you have a copy, I would be happy to authenticate it for you. I do hate it when things get political. Let's just, let's just go. Uh, I'm going to proceed up towards Galapraga. Okay. Do, do, do. Keep close pace I'll behind. Follow. Um, so as you walk to there, um, uh, Marrow suddenly, um, as she steps forward as well, boom, you hit just an invisible space or an invisible wall that just stops you in your tracks. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> and she takes and sort of starts scratching at her arm and then peels back a portion of her own flesh and infernal letters begin glowing underneath 
both on the um you can see them running along the tendons of her arm and then up onto what she's peeled back the contract seems to specify that it is mahadi himself that has um who is supposed to come collect i can't read the thing of that uh, she is correct that but is in fact galabraga open for negotiations what would the galabraga wish for in return for payment of her debt through an intermediary galabraga ask Three options to you. Three. One of you give your soul to Galabraga <laughs> forever. Mine's gone to someone else, so that's not me. Two. Each of you give me your prettiest things. I see them on you. I see the rod. I see the cloak. I see all the things. Give me your prettiest. Or three. The Raven Queen. would mark you and Galabraga will be the painter a ritual you will undergo you as she points to you um uh Karulas uh also I'm just curious what is everyone's charisma score 20 18 12. 13. Are you? Are you? She does not point to Shuma. What's that? What does she mean? Uh, DM, would a... Uh, w- would this ritual be known to someone who has experience with religions? Um... Make a religion check. Great. Well, that's a seven. <laughs> seven? Uh, not a not a, a ritual to the Raven Queen that you're familiar with, at least. I'm not sure what she means by that. Would you care to elaborate? Ah! <gasps> we'll mark you. As well, as affected by her, nothing else. What is that? You will be marked by the Raven Queen in my ritual to gain her favor. What does being marked mean? Mm-hmm. Would you care to see? No. How about four? You give us the eight, or we'll kill you. Oh, careful, careful. That's an intimidate. Oh, uh, go ahead and roll it. <laughs> oh, God's sake. <laughs> no well, way. she just looks at you and, um, hey, you've not a done large this before, have you? Uh, a large grin spreads across her mouth and you see these sort of um, yellowish dagger-like teeth and you then hear sort of shifting sound under the ground and you swear no. you can hear one of these squares that are marked just shift ever so slightly. <sighs> Careful. It worked on the wizards. Now, we, we would really rather avoid violence if we can there's no reason to get upset here 
We're merely doing the bidding of Master Mahadi. Yeah. Now. And DM, I, I wanted to be testing the wall. The um, it seems wall. Uh, like a like uh, I'm not in a five foot square box, for example. No, no, no. It's it's around her. She is a large size, so it's, yes, um, in a box. So I will draw it for you. Okay, so it's not something like a curtain dividing the room. And it's not a box around just us. It seems to be around her. Yeah, you've seen it moving up and down. You can see it far. As far as you know, it goes like this, and there's at least a corner here and a corner here and goes up a, a little bit as you are oh, miming your way Taller than me! <laughs> <laughs> So what will it be? What is your answer to my questions three? <laughs> well, I see you're not interested in my gorgeous face, so I'm happy to offer you something that is of great value to me, if that's what it's gonna take to get this done. But I know that you want something you from do everyone. You and so. go through the ritual and maybe yes. Is that on behalf Agreed. of everyone? Agreed. Oh, come on, please, just you... give us the soul coins, and I cast suggestion. Ooh. Okay. Uh, what is the? Uh... I mean, he did say please, right? <laughs> he did. I mean, please is great. Um, Matters. It's a wisdom save. Versus. Is the charm condition? <laughs> uh, suggestion. Dun, 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 dun. Ba -da, ba -da, ba. Da -dum, da -dum, do, Features that can't be charmed are immune to this effect. Um, you see her gaze then snap again to you, and she says, Very, very rude. I will cut her symbols into all of you over and over and over and over and one by one all of the um trap doors you've seen start to fly open and these pale sort of um almost uh hasty, undead-looking elves start to emerge from the holes. You may know these as Shatarkai, um, a um, sort of cursed race of elves. They rise up, some of them with daggers, others wielding enormous chains as they emerge and begin to attack. We shall roll initiative. <laughs> Damn it, Carolus. <laughs> Carolus ain't got time for that. But you got time for a combat? I think, I think we're going to I think I think we're going to have to call him don't Carolus. <laughs> 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 so funny. <laughs> Guys, we're really slow. <laughs> All right, that's easy, it's short. The more nimble ones each draw two short swords. Um, one looks at you, Carolus, and moves towards you and makes a series of attacks. Three of them, in fact. Um, I have a 17, a 24, and a 26 to hit. All hit. All hit? Yep. Okay. Um, very good. So the first one is going to be, let's see, ugh, gross, 13 plus. Uh, first attack does 21 damage. Bam. Second hit does eight damage. Third hit does five damage. Well. 
and this larger one uh, oh that's not their turn yet um was that, that first one was just all damage was it what was that first one literally just all damage yeah so 21 damage sword. for the first short sword then eight and then five three attacks hit yeah the first one was done 21 damage with a short sword they probably have sneak yes. attack or some shit like that yeah that's correct but you got the numbers correct there okay so. Not being flanked and, or anything else. Well, I didn't know sneak attack would count. That's why I'm asking. Sorry, you what? I wasn't being flanked or anything, so I didn't know if sneak attack would have worked. It worked before uh, you. Just, it's fine. It does in this sense, yes. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, all right, Mero, you have one coming at you with three swipes as well. Um, and they're at disadvantage, cloak of displacement. Oh boy, I'm I'm sad. My first <laughs> hey, one was DM a crit. <laughs> first one was a crit too, but it's gonna be a, a thirteen. So the they're second gonna have to roll, go assassin somewhere else. Thirteen misses. I have um, I have double twenty fives for the second attack. Yeah, that was hit. Is that one of the Four. ones that goes first, Peter? Nope. Sure isn't. Sorry. Um, all right. We'll take that back and move him back. Um, I will. I guess I'll re-roll as one comes towards Shuma. Um, we'll do three attacks against Shuma. I have a natural one. I have an does 18 hit Shuma. Nope. Uh, and a nine. The other one comes towards you from the corner here. There's three more attacks. Uh, I have a high of 26 here. Uh, 26 hits. A Four. Blue. A total of... Gross. 22 damage. Okay. Um, and then lastly, like we to have... use my reaction uh, <gasps> on that. And okay. say, uh, that's very unkind of you. Um, I am forcing that attacker to make a wisdom saving throw. DC 16. Oh, cool. DC this is rebuke the violent. Throw. Cool. I have a six. Uh, it takes radiant damage equal to the damage dealt by that attack. Ouch. Oh. 22 radiant damage. It ah, recoils uh, from your words. Um, does the damage still get dealt? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. All right. In that case, uh, so that one, our Mr. Red has taken some damage. There, excuse me. And now, Yung Kun, uh, three attacks against you. Uh, holy crap. I have uh, two natural ones and a 21. The, the 21 will hit. <laughs> All right. Uh, 19 points of damage okay. of the piercing variety. And that's four of my guys. That's it. Which will bring us on to Marrow. Okay, well, I'm going to step uh, straight at it. Knowing that the trap door is there, hopefully I can either tell that it's solid or you know, Warn me if I just uh, fall to my death right now. Uh, yeah, they've stepped out of them. There's a hatch that goes back down. So, so, so they okay. Just, yeah. Uh, then I'm going to make an attack roll. Uh, let's see. That's a melee attack. Um, I'm also going to be using Isex Binding Ties. Ooh. What? Well, my <laughs> goodness the gracious. Fuck? That's a lot. <laughs> That's a 25 That's so to hit. so much dice. Um, yeah, that hits. Uh, this one is wearing um, sort of a corroded, twisted looking type of plate mail. Um, but nonetheless, that hits. Did I have disadvantage at all? Making sure. Um, 
No, you did not have disadvantage. Okay, then uh, I am within five feet. Nothing else is within five feet, so I didn't need advantage, and all that damage counts. Wait, really? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> 3d8 that plus would 3d8. Be rakish uh, audacity. You don't need advantage oh on the attack roll. Oh my gosh. Holy so crap, attack. that's a rogue attack. If okay. I am within five feet, no other creatures are within five feet, and I don't have disadvantage. And what does the spell, what does the, um, what does that Isak extra effect binding appear like? ties. Yeah, what does that uh, look like? It, as I strike it first, it is, uh, first it just takes the damage, but then it's also in, uh, surrounded by shimmering energy that looks like it's bound by bandages, bindings for wounds. Uh, Ooh. Would I hear that somebody was in some way related to Ilmeter? Uh, yes. yes. Both me and David. They would look very familiar to you, but somehow not. Yeah. It's like uh, punishing 60 bandages. Damage. 60 and, damage. <laughs> and then I move another five feet and then finally step out of range. And because of fancy footwork, if I made a melee attack, it cannot take opportunity attacks against me. Yeah. Fancy sure footwork. enough. Rogue turn, man. Okay. Very cool. And uh, it's got a bonus action, I think. <laughs> uh, crap. Um, there's not. There, there's nothing for me to hide there. So I'll, I'll just actually. Uh, I'll get over to there, using bonus cunning action dash. All done. Okay. So so he's not dead. Um he needs to be dead. He's dead, right? No, he's not dead. Alright, but he is sheathed in energy. Now it is Karulas's turn. I take a five foot movement to there. And I Eldritch Blast the one to my left. Uh, a bonus action Hex first. And I will Eldritch Blast that one. For uh, 20. 13? 13. Oh, oh, this is my disadvantage. Uh, If you're in melee range with yeah. it? Thir uh, 13. 13 will not hit. Okay. They are too nimble. Again then, 19. 19 hits. It takes... 16... 18 damage. And flies 10 foot back. Okay. Uh, I then fly 30 feet up. Uh-huh. And then blast this one here. The one that Alias was hitting. Okay. Mm -hmm. 27 to hit. Hits. For 13. 19 damage. Ooh. He moves 10 Just feet back as well. Gotcha. Thrown against the the cave wall there and that's very me. cool that was me done awesome and he's dead now um, right no not dead <sighs> not dead shuma i'm gonna throw a one two punch at the red marked individual okay uh 21 um 21 hits for 11 points of bludgeoning damage uh, which Got counts it. as magical, by the way, for what it's okay. Worth. Um, throw another one. 18. 18. Yeah, let me double check. 18 hits. Okay. Uh, six points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Um, I'm going to spend a key point. 
to do flurry of blows and with my first flurry of blows i'm actually going to change targets um throw in a back fist towards this one right next to me yep. um utilizing hand of harm um so let's see here a 23 to hit so 13 points of bludgeoning damage plus uh six points of necrotic damage and he's poisoned Oof. oh boy and Let's then double check that they can be poisoned well, if they can be you're dealing necrotic poisoned. damage huh okay mm -hmm. can... Partially. More hit just just for this those six damage okay gotcha um, and then with my last one, uh, with my last one, I am going to actually, um, reach back and touch myself on the shoulder and with a slight reddish glow, I will heal with, oh. um, my other ability that allows me to heal and I'm trying to find the dice. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um while uh Elena finds that, could you all do me a big favor and keep oh, in mind for at least this good. combat that the enemies who are resistant to necrotic damage, um and so have the necrotic damage you deal. If you could help me out with that, I'd be grateful. Sure thing, Peter. Uh I healed four points, and that is uh the end of my turn. I think I'm gonna stay put in this little clusterfuck here. It was a minor hand of healing, but it was, yeah. it was still a little, it was still some healing. Alrighty then. Wung Kwon. Um, well, <laughs> this did not go the way I wanted very well. Um, I will tap my cane on the ground and uh, cast Crusader's Mantle. Uh, this is a uh, aura of holy power that extends out for me for 30 feet, uh, emboldening all of my allies, including myself. Um, we all get a extra 1d4 radiant damage when hitting with a weapon attack. Cool. What color would you like it? Well, uh, like a light blue, I think, would be fine. Shouldn't conflict too much with the map. Wow, that's big. Okay. 30 cool. foot radius? That's what it says. Yeah, cool. That's a 30 foot radius. Yeah. Cool. Uh, that is my action. Um, <laughs> and I am concentrating on that now. Let me put a little marker on myself. And I will okay. just say... <laughs> Well, if we must, we must. No, I'm not particularly happy about it. And that will be my turn. Okay. Um, it is going to, uh, it's going to be these heavily armored now, um, Shadar Kai that seem to be wielding chains with spikes and uh, the one here will indeed move and take um, I believe some damage from uh, um, from Marrow's I think, it, I think it was already calculated in so I believe oh, it the was movement damage was yeah. okay yeah it, it read out as part of the, the overall damage so Oh, okay, okay, okay. Cool. But as it moves, what happens? Yeah, tell me. You tell me. <laughs> as it moves, the bandages that seem to be binding it that were reminiscent, but not quite, of Ilmater, rip, and with a thunderous sound, first bloody and then finally break. And as they break, the thunderous sound occurs and the creature takes damage. Booming blade. Cool. Very cool. So this one then ah, calls out against those bandages as they rip into its flesh and then swings this heavy spiked chain at you. Uh, how many times? Three times. 
Let's do it. Uh, at disadvantage, I guess, huh? Yes. Uh, so I have a 16 for the first one? Yes. 17 AC. Okay. Ah, I've You sound so threes. disappointed, DM. <laughs> I was, but now I hit you. So, um, this chain attack will deal... Let me double check. It's got, I got a bunch of numbers here. So what are the attacks? Um, Is it like a, a stab, a bite? What are the different there, things? Uh, it's a large um, spiked chain that it's bludgeoning you with. It's like swap, swap, swap. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I have uh, 16 damage on the hit. Can I see the attack? It, you can. Then I'll use my uncanny dodge to half the, okay. the damage. Assuming the so next we'll one's a not a crit. Straight roll. Um, on the next one, because I believe that's how the displacement works. It is yes. no longer displacing you. So 20 yeah, So hit. how much damage did I take, though? Uh, you have it, so it's 8 damage. Okay. And the second hit, assuming 20 hits you, is going to be um, 17 points of damage. It is then um, um, going to yell out something in sort of a cursed form of um, elvish that sounds like... Um, uh, you fools stab deep at their hearts and this one this one and this one are all going to use their reactions to make attacks so uh, we have a so reaction don't speak verse, Elvish. Um, the turtle is going to be a short sword attack 17 to hit I think misses uh, that is my AC Meet uh, okay um Let's see. Yes, yes. Nine points of damage. Okay. And versus Shuma, uh, the heavily armored one and the regular one will both attack. Um, so the regular one, the short sword does get this this time. So it's going to be 24 points of damage. And the big guy is going to use his big hammer coming in at a 21 to hit for 11 points of damage. All right, so that was this one's turn. Now it's this other one's turn, and it is going to a step forward and attack Mr. Warlock. I'm 30 foot up. Are you now? That's right, you said you're flying. Do you have a flying item? No, I just... Oh, okay. I just fly. In that case, we'll move around and also attack Mr. Tortle. One attack. The hammer. 19. Four. That's on me. Correct. Yep. For yep. 19 points of damage. Another attack. I make the con save. Four. Ooh. Eight points of damage. Hit that 22. The last attack that it makes. Um, I have a 16. Nope, a 14. Sorry, Sorry, that's that second one was eight points of damage, you said? Eight points of damage, yeah. Great. I made all of my concentration checks. It will also mm -hmm. call out a um, instruction to its allies, and the one here that is in range that hasn't taken its reaction will take its reaction to attack. Short sword... Um. Just out of curiosity for that one, um, was it affected by poison or no? Poisoned. Uh, ooh, yes, it was. Okay, so then attack should be at disadvantage. Indeed. Which might affect the one Thank that, you. was that the same one that hit me? I It was hard to tell which, who was attacking me earlier. Um, the earlier, so I just took 24 by the time, damage. so the poisoned one was um, was not. So this is the first time this poisoned one has used this reaction gotcha. to attack. So um, disadvantage, I have 18. Uh, does not hit. Okay, very cool. And then uh, big buddy over here will make one more attack versus the rogue uh, with his big chain. I have a nine to hit. Very disappointing. But now it's the sneak's turn. Oops, I guess it's just 
a lot that they get to do. So we'll come back to this one. Three attacks. 17 hit. Um, oh, you're flying. Never mind. Ah, it's gonna... No, it's gonna... Um, steady aim and then take a light crossbow shot at you. That's what it's gonna do. Um, that is a bummer. I have a 16 to hit. Does that hit? Yep. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, 10 plus... Ooh. So 27 damage total. Poisoned guy is going to continue attacking. I have a 20, I have an 11, and I have a 15. Mm, 20... Uh, five points of piercing damage. Okay. It hates that poison. Um, another one is going to take three more attacks. This one is not poisoned. Regular attacks. Uh, 21, 19, 17. Two hit. Five. Eight. 13 plus... Uh, 22 points of damage. That's me down. I will take my reaction to take that damage for you. Okay. Aura okay. of the something or other. Hold on. I don't know what it's called. Uh, <laughs> uh, aura of the Guardian. When a creature within 10 feet of me takes damage, I can use my reaction to magically take that damage instead. Cool. 22 points, you said. Yeah. Yep. And so you and feel that blade you see a glee as it begins to take forward but you feel the blade almost enter your body but um you hear the turtle uh, groan next to you and then the blade is sort of expelled from your body and you are you feel undamaged by it Damn. that is them the one will then attack the turtle um I have 22, 17, 11. Two hits, uh, The I 22 yeah. and the 17 will hit, yes. 13. Uh, uh, sorry, 17 points of damage. Total or Total. for the first hit? Yeah. Uh, any of them, so neither of them will be above the... Threshold to increase the save. Cool. Whew. That was close. Yeah, really. Oh, there Aww. it is. <laughs> I suppose my luck couldn't hold out for six six rolls in a row, so concentration There's a drops. lot of attacks. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. No worries. I'll drop the... Uh... Yeah, oh, I got you it. You got it. Great. And that brings us on to... Uh... Carulus, this one in nope. front of you is Mara? bleeding heavily. Mara. Mara. It's okay. Um, Excuse me. Names. Oh, sorry. I, New game. Names. Who dis? It's names. Okay. Um, Mero. Also, I did some checking on the formula. Uh, I thought that the uh, binding ties was a little bit odd looking. Uh, it was, in fact. It was leveling when it should not have. So the guy that I'm fighting, in fairness, gets 15 HP back. Okay. If it's a... It's if it's a... Okay. If it's a booming blade, it levels with you no matter what. Are you sure? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can have one level in the class, it. and it's it, it goes off of your character yeah. level. It's. Uh, let me do a quick check because I thought I just read different. Okay. It is definitely um, that I've seen that as well. But it, any me. cantrip will level yeah. is based on your character level, not your mm-hmm. class level. That's yeah. insane, isn't it? Yeah. It's really <laughs> insane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's, okay, well then I guess that's right. I guess he yeah. doesn't get fifteen back. I was trying to trying to. I thought it was crazy Don't looking. Don't be but, generous, okay. Scott. Be greedy. I know. Well, you know. Um, so, uh, I'm going to move. Uh, he's the same size I am. Uh, I'm just going to stab him. Uh, do it. There's, and I am going to do the same attack 
I just edited this thing, so I'll have to roll separately, but it's... That was interesting. <laughs> I'll fix it in a moment. The attack oh. is 23 to hit. Yes. <laughs> Your for... dice vomit. <laughs> it's <just> yeah. <laughs> <Blech. laughs> <laughs> with these sixes. Uh, but uh, again, I don't need advantage, and there's nothing within five feet other than me, so it is 32 points of damage. Uh, and he does immediately take... Um, he did. Yeah, he did. 12 more points of damage. <laughs> well, he's dead he now? Did already. He's definitely dead. Yeah, he's dead. So Good. And all the others disappear, like, blink, right? Seam you in kill the, the master minion and they blink out? No, no, no such luck. Um, I tried. But it's one of the commanders, so at least there's one less that can command three others to attack on reaction, so that helps. Okay, and then uh, knowing that I don't have a second attack of any kind whatsoever, um, I'm going to duck in here and hide. Very good. Uh, and let me go all the way in and break line of sight. Okay, go ahead and roll the roll the stealth. And... I think I get advantage for that, but I, I don't think I'll need it. 23. Ooh, nice stealth. Carlos. Yeah. Um, how hurt is this one here? We see we have a commander. I do not believe he's been attacked yet. Okay, I point at him and tell him to be gone and cast Banishment. Christmas save. Okay, okay. I like it. Get it, get it, get it, get it. I have rolled a bad. natural rolled fifteen bad. for a sixteen. Bye bye. Poof. He vanishes. Oh, can, oh sorry, I can banish. I, I banish him because it's more than one person. Thank you very much, Z. Oh, you upcast it. You have the yeah, higher levels. Always upcasted. Yeah. Um, and. I I pick. I've already hurt this one, so and this one's been hurt. Has this one been hurt at all? Yes. Oh, you have. Yes. Poisoned. What about this one? This one is the one that has not been. That one as well. Pop, pop. What were you um, concentrating on, Jade? I was concentrating on Hex, which is now gone, and I'm now concentrating on Banishment. Okay. And then I move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 30 over to here. And then cool. I. I only section drink a healing potion. So. so <laughs> it's Monday night. It's Monday night. Okay. You know? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Six hit points back. All right. Cool. And Shuna, Shona, Shuma. Uh, Shuma. <laughs> I'll just hit a, hit every variation of my name before the night's over. Um, yeah. I will start by uh, hitting red or attempting to anyway with an eighteen kick to the sternum. Um, red. Yeah, that hits red. Uh, 11 points of bludgeoning. Very nice. Uh, follow that with probably not a hit. Sadly. Negative. Negativo. Negativo. Um, let's then, uh, let's flurry of blows that then. Um, I'm trying to take this fucker down if I can. Oof. 15? Just misses. Just barely. Damn it, son. Okay. Natural 20. Uh, hey, oh. So I'm definitely going to throw a uh, hand of harm on that. Ooh, what's a hand of harm? That's that's um, my necrotic damage. Um, so that'll double some dice. Um, cool. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, 15 on the magic bludgeoning. Um, and then I'll throw in another d8 here. Uh, 13 points of necrotic down to six. 
Oh, uh, and he's consumed. poisoned. There's no save against the poison? Nope. <laughs> That's dumb. Bad but good. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and hey, cantrips level up. We're in a strange new world here. <laughs> um, and let's see here. Um, there's nowhere really that's uh, decent for me to go here. So I don't know, I'm just going to stay put, I guess. Hold the line. Alrighty, Yung Kun. Wong Kun. Well, I, I guess we'll do this then. Um, he uh, pulls out a small signal whistle from a pouch and, and blows in, into it, um, and a shimmering force field appears around him as he casts Shield of Faith hmm. um, as a bonus action. And then he reaches over, and he will uh, touch a claw gently to show us back um, using Lay on Hands as an action for 15 oh, HP. You sweet, sweet old turtle. <laughs> <laughs> That's a old turtle. That's They're bleeders. brothers in suffering. Yep. Um, so I have a plus two to AC with Shield of Faith. Cool. All right. My guys are dead and banished. I still have these. Top one will kind of move around the corner here. Still looking at uh, you, Scary Caster. Well, actually, will not move because that's how the thing works. And will steady himself and attack with the crossbow. Um, ooh. I've rolled a natural 20. Is, um, this one is... If it hits me, I'm calling shenanigans. I was going to say, does, uh, what's the range of it? It's on 30 foot up and... 80 I'm feet. Oh, okay. yeah. um, Peter, I uh, don't want to shortchange you. Um, the top one in front of me should no longer be poison. Ah, understood. Oh, it's still the end of your turn or something? Yes. Okay, gotcha. All right. Let's see that damage on the natural 20. There you go. I'm going down here. <laughs> Falling uh, damage, yeah! <laughs> and the regular is... Regular Ooh. damage. Got any reactions there? Come on, man. It is. Absorb. Yeah. I can't, you know, jump in the way of the arrow and try to de uh, deflect it. <laughs> Maybe if he wasn't flying 30 feet in the air. <laughs> hey, come on. That doesn't exist in D&D. &D. 48 points of damage. Uh, oh, yeah. DM, I will say that's quite rude of you. As I use my <laughs> oh, no. reaction and activate the um, amulet of um, the devout to use a second use of my channel divinity. Um, <laughs> and deal uh -oh. that much damage in Radiant to the attacker. Oh no, he rolled a Carolus 10 on the does... wisdom saving throw. It does that at distance too. <laughs> Up to 30 feet away. Wow. Wow. It Oof. gets absolutely pulverized violent. by that. It I doesn't still, quite I still tell take it. it. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Okay. You do still take it. Are you it, still up? No, I'm down. Oh, okay. I was going to say. You see him fall, fail a death save on the ground. Uh, I float down. Oh, jeez. Oh, you do? With that? Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. I'm, no death I'm saves. Failed. Form, so. That would be awkward. And that's that one's turn. I still got two Banishment more. Drops. So this one will step forward oh, into shit. its friend's Banishment place. drops. Oh, shit. Ooh. Yep. Goodbye. <laughs> We're done. Quite possibly. <laughs> Roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> did he survive his own critical? Did did he actually survive that? Yeah, he did. I Barely damaged him as By well. By like oh a hair. God. You damaged a few different things though, right? Yeah, the first hit thick. I did on him was like twenty or damage. Oh, it's a showman sandwich. Actually, it's a taco. <laughs> <laughs> with with size of turtle. <laughs> the size of turtle. Yes. All right. So we've got some disadvantage attacks was, at Shoma. It was 18, by the way. Jade, for, for reference. What's that My for? highest, I believe it, I'm not lying at all, 
got yeah, no, eight, I a 10 and a 12 to hit Shoma. No. And I've got uh, 18, 18, 21. Against who? Shoma. Uh, 21 hits. Small amount of damage. Small amount of damage. Fourteen. And a mom dice. Terrible sneak. Terrible sneak attack. And, no sneak attack. Right. Terrible sneeze attack. <laughs> sneeze attack and a couple against the turtle. I throw cover. Uh, regular one two three. Um, I've got fourteen, fifteen, nineteen. The nineteen will hit. That meets my AC. Or. Uh, 15 points of damage. How's the turtle looking? Uh, 5 HP. <laughs> oh! Stop! You guys got this. Burned through those HP real quick. Um, concentration. I make it. Cool. Oh, so we're going to go okay. take a nap after this one. <laughs> Scary times. Well, the banishment lasted just long enough. Um... And it is uh, Marrow's turn. Oh boy! So do I want to go for damage, or do I try to help somebody? Gosh. Damage. Damage. Mm. Okay. First thing I heard. The rest of us are going down. Otherwise. Yeah. I'm coming out. <laughs> it's five, ten, fifteen to him, and I'm going to use Isex Shared Sips. Hmm. Uh, which. As I make an attack, let's see if the attack hits. E. E. 16. Vonage. Oh. Just barely hits, brother. Vonage. <laughs> oh, it does. <laughs> yep. Uh, well, then, um, I think I get sneak attack for that. You get advantage as um, well. You, you come out of hiding. Yep. Yeah. Do I get advantage? Do you want to yeah, 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 you would. Okay, yeah, um, I'll, I'll just shoot for fish. it. No okay. crit. All but right. uh, wait, it would have been 20. So which damage do you want to take? First, First one, damage roll. You rolled, yeah. Okay, so that's 26 damage. And then it also is burned by scalding hot water for uh, nine more. So it, it died from the initial attack. And then the one directly above it, the scalding hot water splashes mystical whoosh, onto it, doing 14 <laughs> points of fire damage. Ooh, tasty. Cool. And then I'm going to uh, bonus action. Let's see. I can actually. Can I do bonus action? Feed somebody a potion. Oh, it's Monday yeah. night. It's Monday night. <laughs> Isn't that the rule? <laughs> On, no. Uh, should I donate some to get initiative? Oh, to get, that's uh, right. It's advantage for myself. Take one yourself. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> unfortunately if you're not what what type of um, uh, rogue are you? Swashy. Swashy, that's right. Okay, yeah, unfortunately, no. Yeah, okay, I'm all done then. I'll, I'll be back here ready to do something, uh, and I'm done. Bonus action hide. Or dodge. Yeah, mm-hmm. bonus dodge. action dodge. <laughs> Good call. I already got this advantage. <laughs> oh, that's true. Oh, well. It's okay. Um, I'm, I actually yeah. fall down. I'm just scooting I'm butt scooting like all right so you do not feel (laughs) not feel the death save carlos please roll one though oh yeah uh forgot i've got to do that death save uh there we go nice (laughs) oh you come (laughs) you pop up with one hit point Now, why is that for those viewers at home? <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Natural 20 on the death save. Delicious. Uh, so that's one hit point of that. Apply changes. So I get my go. Yeah. I believe you can take your turn as normal. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Oh, God. Um, okay. Uh, oh, God. Shoot this motherfucker. <laughs> oh, what do I go for? Blasty, blasty, or. What are your choices? Not uh, sickening radiance. No, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I will haunt you to your dying. Unless you drop it behind the wall of force. 
but probably we should take again, out the people you? in front too. I could banish them again, but then we've still got to fight them. So who, which one looks yeah. hurt the most? Um, this one that hurt you is barely standing, <laughs> and then this one that um, right. oh, this one has been damaged, not right. extensively. The one that's been hitting me. Yes, yeah, the one that took you down. Yeah, stand up first. Revenge. Uh, for 29 to hit. Uh, 16 damage. Um, that does it for that one. Awesome. Nice. And you said this one here, yeah? Yes. He's taken some damage. I hit him. I hit him. I hit him. Ooh, nice. You're walking up towards a crit there. Uh, 10 damage. 10? Okay. And I hit him Final again blast. if he's not dead. 25. Yeah. Or 9 damage. 9 damage. It's looking... Oh, and, and he moves 20 feet after I've hit him twice. Okay. Sadly, it's Done. unforced movement. Um, oh, well. It is forced movement. It, it is, it is, sorry, it is forced movement. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, it's um, Right. God. Yeah, I just... Heal thyself. I can't. I haven't got anything to heal me with. Okay. Um, <laughs> that is <I've>... enough. <laughs> yeah, um, what can I do as a bonus action? Anything? Um, I start flying again, or I, ho I start hovering again. Okay. And I move back and up 30 foot. Didn't you take half your movement already to get up, or is... Oh no, you're flying now, so I'm you flying, probably have yeah. extra movement. Yeah. Never mind. He still was prone, so he would have taken yeah. half of it to stand up. Yeah. Um, oh, I, I move up as high as I can move up. Got it. Shoma. Um, I would like to aim some punches at the fellow in front of me. Not in okay. front. Of me. There are two in front of me. Uh, the big boy. Big boy, commander the big man. Big Shaney boy, who I would like to just. Stop shot whoa time. gosh, let's not okay. Well we'll try again. <laughs> Nineteen. Okay. Um so I'll deal the damage here and then I'm also going to um spend a key point for a stunning strike. So I would okay. love a con save. Nineteen just barely hits, by the way. Oh good. Ten points of bludgeoning damage. Rolled an eight. Lovely, he's stunned. Um and then I'll uh flurry of blows to attack him because why not okay stun um, target go for it yeah i like me a stun target while elaine is doing that we've just had a ten dollar donation from snake spinner thank you very much oh it's a critical and the farms <laughs> <laughs> even better a uh, healy awesome. potion to one of the players uh peter so okay you're at advantage by the way oh so we don't advantage. have a who gets yeah, stuff yeah i know that's okay <laughs> um just roll 1d4 peter Let's see here. 2d8. Yeah, wouldn't it be 1d5? Plus 3. Oh, the, the DM doesn't get potions. Right. Yeah. <laughs> David, sh we'll um, go from top of initiative down, so that will be... Do, do, do. Careless. Nice. That's handy. Um, so the damage is 10 points of bludgeoning damage and 14 reduced to 7 necrotic damage. Total of 70. And that's the one below you? No, uh, to the stun target. Oh, still doing the stun target. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, he's also now poisoned. Okay. Um, and I... I'm going to go for the one that's below me now. Oh, with my second hit. 18. That hits. All right. Um, we'll make that... All... No, I can only use that once per turn. Um... Just so you know, your 19 just barely hit the big guy. Cool, cool. Uh, 13 points of bludgeoning damage to okay. uh, the one below me. Done. Cool. Um, and since he is stunned, I will move to the other side of this guy. Cool. With my movement. Keeping distance. Not distance. Close. End of Beautiful. Turn. Good monk turn. One coin. Uh, was that a greater healing potion? Um, a superior, wasn't it? Absolutely <laughs> godly, wasn't it? Oh, uh, <laughs> 99, that's got to be a godly healing potion. Fully healed, <laughs> Pong Party. Result. Damn, oh. son. Te 
Sorry, lower is better, so what? there's a... Oh. <laughs> Worth a try. It's a weakened Crazy. potion of normal healing. It's a negative one. <laughs> Monday nights, isn't it? High is better, though. <laughs> 1d4 minus one. one. <laughs> You're going to get me confused. You, you can't mix have. and match your rule sets, Jake. Uh, no, <laughs> all the cart rules. Okay, no. Sean normally does higher is worse. Oh, does so. he? Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, he, no, I, he I did normally it wrong for does. A while, but, he so. changes it just to confuse everybody. Yeah, I think he does. <laughs> it's quite possible. Okay. So, okay. Jade, uh, regular healing potion. Yeah, thank you very much. This night spinner for that. Thank you very much. Yeah. And one corner. All right. Uh, well, I see that there is a, a stunned target next to me. And so I will say I'm, I'm quite sorry for this, but you've brought it upon yourself, really. As I reach out and slash with my claws. Uh, at advantage. Go for it. 22 to hit. Hit. All right. Um, that is eight points of silvered slashing damage plus okay. uh, five points of radiant damage from okay. improved divine smite. And I'm going to smite on that as well. Yes. Expending a second level spell slot. Which should give me do, 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 do. three, no, four, three d eight plus one d eight if it's undead or fiend, which I don't think it is, right? Um, it is not. So three d eight. Great. Um, Pallid elves. For another fifteen points of radiant damage. Boom from the first attack. Second attack, still at advantage. Um, this turtle's going nuts. 15. He feels like a teenager miss, again. Right? A teenage. It's a miss. That's okay. No worries. Um, yeah. Do you get to take a bonus action attack since you're using your claws? Well, That's kind of fight. up to you. Two weapon fighting. It would be it's, two weapon fighting, but I, I'm not actually wielding. They're natural weapons. They're not light weapons. Natural weapons are still weapons. Um, uh, so if you if you want to rule that they have the light feature, that's fine. <laughs> but they don't technically have any tags because they're okay. granted by a feature. So yeah, depends how I long like your nails might... are. That, that might uh, take something away from the monk feature by just allowing everyone to do it. So let's let's right. refrain. No um, worries. Unless someone um, says I'm wrong. I guess they're special. And uh, I think that's probably going to be my turn. I'm going to use my bonus action to drink my potion of healing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my commander is stunned. All right. Sneaks. Sneak's gonna sneak over here. Attack three times. You have some added AC, yeah. Uh, nineteen is my AC. I have a eighteen, a seventeen, and a twenty-six. I do have sneak attack. So twenty-six will hit. Uh, twenty-two points of damage. Okay, I'm probably down, but let's find out. Whether the potion of healing, I don't think it can even possibly roll enough to save me. Actually, two d four plus two. What's your hit point? It. It's five, five before I do that. Yeah. So, no, oh, that's, um, sorry, that's gone. That's okay. That's eleven point HP before that hits, so I drop to zero. Go down, that's... and the other sneak attacks the monk. He doesn't have any conditions on him anymore, does he? Nope, no conditions. You just get sneak? That's so rude. <laughs> Thankfully, do not have... Well, there was a condition that had it before, but now it's based on... It, now, again, it's based on the proximity. And he uh. had the um, ally within, anyway. And the other one was doing the stand still and steady aim, so... That's how it worked out. But you just take, for the 25, 10 points of uh, piercing Basta. Okay. 
Piercing pasta. What? Basta. Basta così. <laughs> Piercing pasta. <No> <laughs> uh, Wait. Hey, those noodles can be very sharp if you haven't cooked them yet. Marrow. Okay, five, this? ten, fifteen forward. I'm going to strike at the one lower next to uh, him. Well, you mm-hmm. don't want Whose that name tasty, will be mispronounced uh, again. Tasty stun target. <laughs> Give it tasty a minute. Stun. I don't know that he's anything special. He's stunned. So... Yeah, there's an armored one here, and then there's the regular one here. Um, So you can pick any one you want. Sorry. Um, But, yeah. So uh, go ahead and roll your attack. Advantage on your attack. I'll attack the one that is stunned. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) To be fair, there is one going like this, dodging around and stabbing, and then one's just going, yeah. Uh, crit, and I'm going to go ahead and crit, do uh, crit, crit, Isex crit. Shared Sips again, which for those viewers at home will come into effect in a moment. Uh, advantage that button. 23 to hit. Good thing that 15 wouldn't have done it. So um, it's a 23 will hit. And it's and I have an I have an ally I don't have disadvantage so I think that sneak takes yeah. effect mm-hmm. that's I think 35 well north of the 44 points. 44 Boom. hit points and then commander number two is dead and oh. then the one directly below me takes 10 points of scalding hot fire damage he doesn't like it either and then I'm what is the thing okay uh and then i'm gonna this is this is uh my turtle friend right here right yeah yes okay then i'll just stand over him for the moment and okay. isn't it two I'm sizes already... difference that you need in order to share space he's down him? he's prone just oh, standing on his shell yeah you're standing on <laughs> you top just of stand on top i'm of small you small. get advantage because you're high up now and, and then I'm going the to, uh, and then I'm going to uh, cunning action uh, dodge. This is Avernus, not Mustafar. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> I see no difference. Garulas, you're up. Um, he dead, any? He? I don't like the oh, way the no. halfling's in a bad position for advantage, so I'm going to blast this one here into the wall of force. <laughs> okay. If that does anything, who knows? Smush It'll in. knock him prone at the very least. It will do. Uh, Twenty-three to hit. It will. It. He's making that up, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, Seventeen damage. <laughs> sounded good. Come on. Oh, uh, let me check. Uh, it is still Bailey hanging on. Uh, he does get moved back ten foot into the wall. I don't know if that does anything. Probably not. Well, that's what I was saying about knocking him prone. But he's still up. So. Uh, Ooh. Fourteen. Probably a miss. It's a miss. <laughs> and thirty. It's well, 11 points damage. That's enough. Nice. One more sneak it has cool. been snuck. <laughs> um, that's me done. All right. I would bonus action hit, take the healing potion, but I'm going to wait and see what happens first. Let's see <laughs> what the two of you can do against this one. All right. I don't think they're going to overcome you, but. Let's see. I will punch <laughs> 25 points of damage. Oh, is there flanking tonight? 25 points 25 of damage? Is that how you do it? No, the 25 to hit. <laughs> yeah, hits. Is there flanking tonight, DM? Um, Negative. Okay. Negatory. I would like to uh, compel a uh, constitution saving throw from him first time. Um... I feel compelled to roll a six. So okay, so he takes uh, nine points of bludgeoning damage and is stunned. So my second yep. attack comes at advantage. Uh, Twenty-six. Yep. For seven points of bludgeoning damage. 
Uh-huh. Um, as I move into my bonus action phase, I'm actually going to sort of five foot step this way. Um, and in place of one of my um, uh, what are they, speedy flurry of blows, um, which I will use my bonus action for, I will actually reach out and lightly tap um, our turtle friend uh, on the foot and heal him for uh, an amount that I would love to find the dice roll for on my character sheet. There we go. You got healing hits. That's cool. I do. And then I will reach out finally and punch this fellow one more time for an amount. 22 to mm-hmm. hit. Mm-hmm. And that will be a hand of harm. So... It's uh, awesome how monks get like 37 hits. 11 <laughs> points of bludgeoning yeah. damage. And uh, 7 reduced to 3 points of necrotic damage, and he's poisoned. Thank you. Okay, at this point, um, after that, the healing, there's not going to be no more death saves made, and you have a stun target through the round, so until the end of her next, or start of her next turn, so, um, or the end of her next turn. Either way, I think you guys got this. It was a big trap. That was a that was a hard combat to uh, provoke, um, <laughs> but you know, you didn't get a symbol carved into your face. So Yay! there you go. Not yet. Um, and Galabraga will um, drop the wall of force and will be very very pleased at uh, this combat. I think it was hilarious and wonderful. And we'll hand over the um, soul coins. Yeah. So she was just bored. <laughs> No, she's. She seems uh, intent to. Don't ask to, questions. Uh, don't ask. Don't ask questions. Just let her. Just let her. It's okay. It's okay. Just take it. Take the coins. I was going to say, just stay there for Go ten on, minutes. Go on. Take the money and back. run. <laughs> <laughs> we take the money and run. All right. So you can take it and run, and we will pick up. Uh, we'll take a quick break, and then we'll pick up at the Wandering Emporium as you deliver it to Mahadi, who will be eager to allow you a short rest before barreling towards the ball which is about to start you guys have a heist to pull off now welcome back (laughs) to us welcome back to us um we are uh in the middle of a little session we are uh if you are just joining us we are doing the strife of the chosen which is a mini series that we're doing while trapped by hope is on hiatus the new adventurers at behest of a um a child who has been um, marked as the chosen of Ilmater. They have gone to, um, uh, well, all right, there's a chain of events that are happening. They need to get into a ball to recover an artifact called the Fetid Chalice um, to uh, bring back to Dara. Um, In order to get into this ball, they are performing a favor for Mahadi. They have just recovered eight soul coins from a night hag who is in a lair um, in Avernus. Only having, they were only able to do this after a very bloody fight. I want to also remind you, thank you, Alias Prime. We are sponsored by Crack and Dice and have a giveaway going on right now. You can see some of our friends here entering exclamation mark giveaway in the chat. You should do so as well. That will give you the chance to win $25 in store credit to crackanddice.com. Thank you to Crack and Dice for that generosity. In addition, if we get a hype train going, we will do additional giveaways. The info is down in our info section there. Um... Cool, I guess. So we will resume um, exiting the hag's lair as you are all walking back to um, the Wandering Emporium and uh, across the Avernal Wastes. You can follow the same path as previous and not have to make any checks for exhaustion. Well, uh, uh, Shoma, was it? Yeah, that's all right. I feel I must thank you for uh, bringing me back from the brink. I suppose it is not yet my time. Mm. Oh well. (laughs) I'm not really in a position to say whether it's your time or not, but 
If there's something that I can do to alleviate the suffering of one who carries as much as you do, then, you know, so it goes. We cannot choose our time to go. Hopefully we can do good before then, though. I'd drink to that if I had something to drink. Would you like some water? I meant something stronger, but I, I've got my canteen, thanks. Very well. Those of you taking water or eating little snacks on your walk, um, notice that all the food just tastes like dry ash in your mouth and the water seems to do almost nothing to slake your thirst. Your body is nourished. You don't feel yourself suffering from dehydration, but you gain no pleasure or relief from the drinking of water or eating of food. Pretty. Yeah. Uh, now, 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 where where did you guys say we are again? Avernus. Avernus. And, and for those of us that don't travel very far very often, where is Avernus? It's the first circle of the Nine Hells. Huh. Think about the prime material plane where you're probably from, like an apple. And think about a vernus as the outer layer of an onion that abuts really closely to that apple. And there are nine layers to that onion. And we're on the first one. And all of them are really bad, just like onions. And all of but them not, are really not bad. Not for nothing. I'm I'm already hungry, and you're talking about apples and onions. What, what, what's next? Uh, why don't you just tell me to take a nice drink of water? No such would, thing here. Would Would you like a nice drink of water? My water went bad. Would you like to try mine? He holds out a water skin. <laughs> Last person that gave me water gave me more than just water. I'm okay. Very well. I don't think I want to know the context for that statement. Well, those little things. I don't know if you noticed that I do little things when I'm fighting. That's new. Oh. I don't really like it. Uh, sorry? I think... Can you take it back and get a refund? I'm I'm working on it, but I, I have to actually be in Baldur's Gate to do that. I could send you Never back. accept gifts from strangers, especially, like, bums on the street. You don't want their presence. I could send you back to the material plane, but Man. I don't know where you'll end up. We've got to finish speaking this thing as, first. Speaking of someone who's been a bum on the street, I'd take a tiny amount of offense at that. But I've always you know. found that those that live on the streets are quite accommodating to others who live frugally. Frugally? I've never seen that in a book. Oh. I need I need to read picture books. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um so after this time, you're able to make it back to the Wandering Emporium. Mahadi will graciously offer you a short rest before you, um, before telling you that he is nearly ready and uh, will begrudgingly go to the ball. Get it started. And, and take you there. Let's so, after a short little rest or a healing and patching up you do you load up with Mahadi in a giant war machine um, it has this almost glistening red um, uh, metallic armor on it it is absolutely beautiful and he gets in the um, driver's seat um, kind of looks around and says well it has been some time I'm to check leave. out the wastes a bit. Are we able to buy hmm? 
anything. Like healing potions. <laughs> Do you have any soul coins? No. Then I doubt it. Gold? Ha! <laughs> useless here. Or virtually useless, at least. Does, does everything here cost soul coins? Everything here costs souls. Hmm. Minted or not. I'm sure we could strike some sort of deal for an advance offering of, well, potions, magic items, powerful magic items. Potentially. Your soul is the price. Illusionist gloves. My soul. <laughs> you convince each and every one of these standing in front of me and I can maybe make that work. Yeah, good fucking luck. <laughs> or you can trick them. That works too. Good fucking luck. <laughs> no. Are we <laughs> Are we good to go then? We're let's going get a to move be, on. We're almost more than fashionably late. Right, let's go. And he pedal the metal. He inserts a um coin into the a slot on the war machine and you hear the engine start up. And there's a, a roar of um, energy that comes from the um, uh, uh, from the engine below it. This <laughs> and it's a combination of extreme energy bursting like a fireball, but you feel you hear the wails of pain and sobbing as the engine sort of. Um, um, jolts about with whatever life force is fueling it, and you shoot across the Avernian wastes. Um, Just out of curiosity, how <laughs> long of a trip is this? Um, about an hour. Okay. Um, during the hour, I'm sitting uh, wherever there's a comfortable... <laughs> comfortable uh, corner seat, and I've uh, gotten out a book, and I am sketching my companions. Oh, I'm having a look. What sort of book it is? I'm I love, posing. I love books. Scre sketchbook. Oh, it's a picture book. It's a oh, picture book. I love picture books. God. <laughs> no, look at your yes. pictures. I'll show you my picture book. Yeah. And it's just like a massive tome just full of pictures, but they look like they've been stuck there. Uh, <laughs> there's a variety of things. Landscapes, people, um, details of little flowers and plants and strange items I've come across in my time. Well, Carolus is very interested in picture books, so he'll sit and look through your book while you're, while you're sketching. And this is called a xylophone. <laughs> it's one of them. Uh, um, 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 Juan Juan. Um, yes. How long have you been here? Uh, one loses track of time after a while. I believe it's been hmm, less than two centuries. So you must be really old, because I know tortoises live long lives, and you look really old. I'm not exactly sure. Check this out. And soon enough, uh, Mahadi brings around his prized war machine, <clears throat> and you see a looming basalt citadel. Your eyes try to take in the splendor, but it is almost too grand to comprehend. You see winged devils all around um, floating, and um, he stops the war machine. Maybe um, uh, <clears throat> Uh, sorry. Uh, maybe half a mile from it, and he says, There's a few things you should know. First, you're not going to be able to take any weapons inside, as well as other magical items that you're not wearing as clothing. All right. It's normal. You're welcome to keep them in the war machine, or you can check them at the door. Mine's a walking I rod. 
It is very short. That is not clothing, uh. unfortunately. Plus, I've seen you float. They will know what your <laughs> cloak is. Have you, you seen me float? I'm not floating now. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I know what you have. I'll uh, I'll leave behind a staff, a short sword, and um, uh, a dagger in the uh, the cart. But I'm leaving um, the small supply of very very thin darts that line the inside of my boot in place. Okay. Anyone else keeping any weapons or anything like that on their body? Mine's not technically a weapon. DM, the uh, Wonk one will pull uh, four bags of caltrops out of his backpack and <laughs> okay. take another bag of caltrops off of a hook on his shell <laughs> and put them in a corner. Um, and he'll take pretty much anything that could be construed as a weapon, although most of them are not. There's some iron spikes, there's some rope, there's some oil flasks, there's a couple of other flasks full of various liquids that look somewhat questionable, um, etc. And he puts them down, and then he, he's going to turn to Mahadi and, and hold up his, his cane. Um, so it's just a small, gnarled wooden staff about three feet, three and a half feet long that he uses to walk. Um, should I leave this behind, Master? Um, I think you will be okay with that. Is it magic? It is not. It's just a cane that he uses to walk. Okay. Uh, he will be leaving on an the... old man from his cane. From his walking stick. <laughs> He will be leaving on the Gauntlets of Ogre Power, which just appear to be molten metal fused to his skin, yep. um, and the Amulet of the Devout, which is his bracelets. Okay. His holy symbol. Now, who 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 is in the vehicle currently? You four as, as we're Mahadi, driving. That's it. Okay. Uh, as we're driving, then. Uh, now, Mahadi, we're we're going to a a celebration, right? And we'll be with you, right? Uh, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. I'm sure you have some other objective while you're here. You don't need to tell me. Just don't I, implicate I, I, me in I, I, anything. I was, I was just wondering if we all walked in together and we were associated with you. Certainly you would, you would want us to look the part, right? There are many who can see through such things, if that's what you're suggesting myself included I assure you yeah. you will be laid bare for who you are upon entrance so I was thinking fancy clothing but fancy clothing, okay perhaps do you have some yes I no do. I don't that's why I'm bringing it up to you pretend you'd be my well, servant we can't turn around now it's too late oh I would have assumed be you fine. could summon clothing or create it or magic stuff I think we should go inside unless there's any other questions no. oh, fine Good I job. have no ability to do so or desire to do it really I it was not in the contract Mara you're beautiful just the way you are shut up and lead the way <laughs> I'll be Vince you can be Nick let's go uh, let's go DM, was it just just weapons was the rods not a weapon Weapons and magic items magic that are not clothing. Cool. I will untick that right now, then. Yeah, I'll, I'll give up the swords and daggers and such things. Yes. Um, so, they... Um, uh, well, so, you will be uh, led forward, then. Um, and you see, as you get closer to this um uh to this place um ascending towards the gate there are um barbed devils in purple coats you can see their barbs puncturing through their um their uh decorative vests as they 
sit and um, uh, stop every guest uh, from entering, and you can see that at sometimes the gate lowers down, <laughs> fire flares up, and people walk through. Mahadi says, right. As I said, you're welcome to leave anything here, or you can check anything at the gate. I recommend doing it before they search you. Right. See you later. And he walks up and enters the um, <clears throat> and enters the gate. Now, as you all approach, the um, uh, one of the barb devils holds up a hand, and ha- the other one has a scroll. Looks curiously like skin that he's writing on. Um, they say, "All right, guests of Mahadi, what are your names?" Joma. Oh, ma. Carolus. Carolus. Oh, Wong Kwan. Wong Kwan and... Oh, uh, Mar Hobart Prospero Long Hill. Thank you. I'm going to need two lines for that one. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but, right. Okay. I think I got it. Close enough. All right. And they move forward and start to, um, they kind of regard you and then start to pat you down a bit. Shuma, please make a sleight of hand check to see how well your darts are hidden. Alrighty. 11. I done fucked I, up. I, I, hang on. There's something in this boot. And they take off the, um, a, uh, a dart. Ah oh, shit! Sorry, I forgot about it. Here, I'll I'll take the boot back and I'll I'll dump him out on the floor. Slip the boot back on. You can keep make him a, if you uh, want. Make a deception check. Oh sweet fuck! <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot you keep them in there. Like, you keep forgetting. I try to help. And can can I have can I have the advantage? Since he since he's helping. <laughs> that was a good line. So. Okay. Ah! Ah! 19. You feel the um, grip of the... um, uh, Are darts 1d4 damage? Is that what works? Uh, Yeah. As... um, And how many do you have? 10. Okay. You... um, Look... They look at you. It's like, all right, you can go in. But and he takes them and he takes a fistful of them. He says, "You should be more careful next time." And shoves each of them straight into your chest. What? He doesn't have to roll for that. No, he just—they're holding you, and they do it. That's You'll rude. take. It is rude, but so is smuggling in weapons. Um, Seven, nine. You'll take that much damage. I think. I think. It's, I think. Based on the picture, nine we should plus fight. Eight is seventeen. Okay. And then they kind of step back and yank him out, and then hold him up, and then hand you a ticket. You can get these when you exit. And they hand you a little yellow door check ticket. Hmm. All right. Anyone else? None of you have weapons on you, right? No. I mean, does a crowbar count? Did anyone try to? uh, No, Uh, it's not. Have a dagger. Does anyone try to smuggle in um, magic items? I'm wearing my cloak. Nothing that's not on me. That are not clothing. Magic items? Oh, a potion? It's in my backpack. That's fine. Uh, Technically, the amulet. I'm not and sure if you count the amulet clothing. is a piece of jewelry and the okay. gauntlets are gauntlets so mm-hmm. you're fine cloak, cloak protection that's all I've got on me. I'll, okay I'll, cool I'll, uh, you will hear a um, invisible voice deep and and um, booming say no magic items on them besides what they wear they're clear and the gate opens and an enormous curtain of fire goes up in front of you. They beckon you to walk into the curtain of fire. I stride through confidently. 
Likewise. I follow through again. Good Did job, everyone. Uh, I watched them go. This is scary. <laughs> it's a wall of fire. <laughs> yep, the three go in. You hear no cries of uh, pain or anything like that. Okay, I'll go in. <laughs> As he's passing through, I want to just, you... like, start feeling <laughs> a cry of pain. <laughs> nobody, nobody, <laughs> sacred flame on me. Nobody. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> the pain, the agony. <laughs> Agony. That's Agony. funny. <laughs> and as you walk in, um, any of you who have spells cast upon you, mm -hmm. if any of you do, um, there is a um, sense of mm, magic being pulled from your body, and any spell cast upon you right now is dispelled. So now we should cast them. <laughs> now <laughs> you are within Ooh. a grand ball. Um, so the gala here is in full swing. Devils, humanoids, other interesting invitees mingle in the large room. A marble pedestal in the center of the room is partitioned off from the attendees by ropes. Resting upon the pedestal is a canine skull with gems, gilded patterns, and ornate scroll work with golden inlays. This is your objective displayed in the center of the ball. Awesome. Well, fuck. That's a lot of company. <laughs> there are so, yeah, uh, ahead, many, many creatures here. Um, and the outfits are bizarre. Some defy understanding. You see what looks to be a conjurer walking by with it's hard to tell if he's wearing clothes because all you can see are crawling claws um, draped across his body. I've heard and of him. It's Sugar Rocky. Fingers twitch <laughs> every once in a while. And um, there is also what seems to be maybe a um, a um, <clears throat> a a uh, devil she strides with confidence long black horns sweeping back and up and you can't tell the, what it is that she's wearing but uh, basically from the neck up there seems to be a fountain of blood coursing every direction over her body and as she moves and as she moves her arms it seems to flow over her like a delicate gown um uh, and indeed does look like a ball gown, but it is clearly flowing blood. And there are a um, team of imps behind her with mops, constantly mopping up the blood behind her as if the, uh, as if a tra as if a train for the dress as she walks by you. Um, That's there a are race. a number She of... really needs to install like a, a, a recycling system so that it can just get like put back in like a fountain. <laughs> It's like the imps fly around and squeegee it on, <laughs> on top of her. It's, it's like, next season, so it that's next going. season's dress. Yeah, 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 it's true. Um, that's the, like, uh, what's the style of architecture where you can see the is it tech, something about technologists or whatever, where you can, they put all of, like, the um, technical aspects on the outside so you can see all, like, the wiring and the vents. And, and uh, it's it's not it, means, it means anyway. they're over budget and they can't afford internal drywall. <laughs> no, but that's on the outside of the building is the, is the design. Anyway, that's so um, weird. yeah. <laughs> um, exposed brick. No, uh, so you walk in here, your objective is clear. Mahadi is mingling around, and there are a number of interesting things that you notice right at the forefront. You see Kiros herself, and I'm going to be revealing sort of the persons of interest here. Kiros herself is lounging on a throne at the um, top of the um, uh, ball. Mm -hmm. You see a strange little gnome um, looking about um, at the top of a, some stairs. Uh, looks to be a caster. You see this bizarre, um, well, not bizarre, but you see a uh, female minotaur in a beautiful white and pink dress who is dancing around um, the uh, dance floor, seeming to take whatever partner she can find and bring them into the dance. Um, 
you can tell that she is constantly looking back towards the chalice. You see skulking around the corners a very questionable looking um, mage, you would assume by their dress, and you see lounging, looking absolutely bored, a giant uh, beast, the head of a lion, and giant wings coming off of him as well. Some type of sphinx. <clears throat> and Fancy many people guess. are coming and going towards this um, chalice, admiring it, looking at it, but you see a um, horned devil is constantly flying around the top of it as a little guard, flying the smallest patrol pattern you've ever imagined. Just a five foot circle over and over and over again. He looks irritated. Uh, so where do I start, y'all? This looks a little nutsy. What, what, what are we doing here again? Like the lady with the blood dress. I, I, I will pick him up and hold him up and sh <laughs> like show him the dance floor. <laughs> Look down We're there. Here to dance. <laughs> no, specifically over there, and I kind of like gesture in the direction of the chalice. <laughs> Luckily to get you a box. That's rude. It's practical. The box part, not the lifting. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, what's the approach, y'all? What, uh, what are we gonna do here? I have an idea. I don't know. <laughs> not sure how I feel about your ideas, but go ahead. Oh, I, you've never seen my ideas. You would like this one. Um, Obviously, there's ears around, so we need to be careful. But if I can get the item, I, and I, I pull out this tiny little bottle, like a just like a, a crystal sort of like um, uh, like a, you know, like a healing potion sort of shape, yeah, like yeah. one of them. If I can get the item, I can hide into this. And then one of you have this on you. And See? GTFO. See, it's a, it's a good plan. See? Okay. Okay. I can run pretty fast if it does come to it. So. Can you outrun a flying sphinx? Uh, that is a hard... Maybe. <laughs> huh. I once knew a tabaxi named Tarash that could run really fast. Great guy. I bet you did. Great yeah. guy. So I want to say too, just to clarify, the um the horn devil flying holding pattern above looks to be guarding. The rest of whom I described seem to be guests but they are the most interesting guests, the ones that aren't just your regular devil types um, mm -hmm. hanging around, yeah. so. Um, I actually, um, before we go all in on the um, uh, quick draw version of this plan, um, Careless, you, you seem like you've got a pretty good handle on a conversation with someone. I could talk to someone if I have to. Well, okay. Consider this a half to situation. Um, I, <laughs> um, I'm. That was a natural twenty sigh roll right there. That was... <laughs> um, I'm going to nod towards the Minotaur. Um, she seems to have some sort of interest in the chalice. Um, it's not quite quite clear what her motive is, but maybe if you get out there, maybe give a dance or two. You know, show those fancy feet. Um, oh you might be able to uh, gauge what her interest is so to make sure our, our uh, interests don't conflict, if you take my meaning. Oh. She wouldn't tell me if she was here to take something anyway, would she? She doesn't know me. You can just gauge. You never know. People like to open up at parties. 
I do have a second plan. Just go fucking talk to her, man. Uh, Chat her up. As, as this conversation continues, um, Wonk One has started walking toward the dance floor slowly. Okay. <laughs> and there he goes. What about if Marrow takes it and I banish him? I don't I don't steal things. Um I I acquire objects that no one else is that's using. What I mean, I wasn't I wasn't assuming. I kind of gently kick Careless towards uh the dance floor. <laughs> the reef don't like it. Get out there, Blondie. I go onto the dance floor. Okay. I'm busting some shapes. And, and start, you see, it is not it. long before a new. Um, it seems like everyone's trying to sort of get away, and then is, um, is there music? Ah, uh, there. I start doing is, some TikTok dances. Or Fortnite dances. I, what did I have for this? Oh, we've heard it before. Sorry, but this is what I got. <laughs> and um. Uh. So, um, again, coming towards you, you see this large, um, very stately minotaur woman in a giant pink and white dress who is kind of um, spinning around and um, trying to, uh, and kind of showing off this frilly, lacy pink dress that she has. And she comes towards you. Do you like my dress? And does a little spin. Please make a uh, wisdom saving throw. Ah, is it a magical ah, effect? To see what you say. <laughs> is it a, it magical, is a magical effect? effect. Yeah. Uh, get it, get it, get it, get it. 16. Fail, fail, fail. Am I, am fail, I near fail, um, the paladin? Fail, fail. I'm on the edge of the dance You're floor. You're not. So oh. probably not 10 feet with, within 10 feet. You feel... Um, won't you dance with me? You f you want to dance with her? She's like, I know I do. This, I was gonna this say yeah. is looking like you just you you get this. You just kind of get this sense. You just really like her. You you're just in the mood to do whatever she wants you to do, for the most part. And she uses, I guess, half of her hoof to wave you closer, and Gives then the, um, the two fingers. I'll give her the middle finger then. <laughs> I, I go and dance with her. Oh, and she starts to uh, swirl you around the dance floor. Um, oh, you can tell. This is not a minotaur of a land called Kryn. They have feet. <laughs> Please make a um, a uh, performance check to see how you're doing on the dance. Um, just as a point 15. of order, Peter, um, while they're um, dancing together, I'm going to sort of keep gently moving along the edge of the dance floor. I want to keep them in view because I can, if they're speaking a language I can understand, I can read lips. Um, cool. So I want to keep an eye on that conversation. Yeah. So she seems very happy with how you're dancing and she's like, oh this is wonderful you have succeeded on the performance check won't you dance closer to the challenge let's show that stupid horn devil what he's missing out on and then she continues spinning and dancing with you around the chalice he's a dolt isn't he am i actually fully charmed or you're not charmed no you are just inclined towards her words. Inclined to acquiesce to your request. Uh, what do you like so much about it? Oh, I mean, I don't care about that cup, but him. And she looks up to the horn devil going around the top. Oh, he's looking. Hmm? And she just kind of puts on a show and then uh, spins you around a little bit and perks up a bit. Hmm. As he looks away. She, hmm. <laughs> That will show him. Um, let's do another pass. This time, look extra interested in me, please. Let's make him really jealous. And she continues to spin you around and dance around the chalice. Okay. He's my ex-boyfriend. 
<laughs> I start fucking losing it over at the at the side of the dance floor. <laughs> are, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you? Are, oh god. Are you, are you afflicted? No, no. I'm just. This is great. Great party. Uh, Fucking love this. Um, it is pretty I, good. Um, I like this music. I, I reach into my pocket and I get my uh, sketchbook out and I rip a piece of paper out of the back that's blank and I uh, take out a piece of charcoal and start writing a note on it. Oh. <laughs> um, I would then like to try to chuck it at the horn devil. <laughs> are, are you going to give him lines to use, like, from the bushes? Like... <laughs> <laughs> So as you kind of lob it up there, he catches and kind of looks around it. I, I wave. And scribbles it. <laughs> um, the note, <laughs> the note says basically, um, seems like someone's interested. Maybe you should talk it out. Could get complicated otherwise. Just trying to help. <laughs> <sighs> he kind of rolls his eyes and crumples it up and. <laughs> keeps flying around a little bit. Um, Anything that you say to Lexi the Minotaur, um, Carlos. Lexi! Yeah. What beautiful horns you have. Lexi's a good name. After a few, after about a minute, you feel the the thing drop. Um, A caster of your level, you can tell that the spell Friends had been cast on you. It is. Yeah. Which just gave her advantage on charisma checks towards you. So you were just more inclined to see her fairly, is really all it was doing. And said, Oh, well, thank you. I just had them polished. Uh, I'm sure you're around. making him extra jealous. Look how red he is. Hmm? Is he red anyway? <laughs> He's redder. <sighs> Uh, DM, I'd like to um, walk up to the cordoned off area where the chalice is. Yeah. And uh, take a moment to look at it and then look up at the horned devil and just say, uh, Would you mind uh, answering uh, some questions for this old turtle? <sighs> and as I do so, I'm going to channel divinity um, on myself to. Um, grant myself Emissary of Peace, which gives me a plus five to Persuasion checks for the next ten minutes. As a bonus okay. action. Well, start off with a Persuasion check. He's not he, mm-hmm. he's, you know, a glorified security guard and uh, right. you get the sense and um, he's not eager to talk to you right off the bat. His name is Ball Plart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so at a plus five to this, that is a... Damn, son! 27. <laughs> he kind of looks down at you, and there's something about your presence that's calming, and he kind of flaps in place for a second. Ah, okay, what is it? I'm supposed to fly around in patrol. Smallest patrol I've ever had. What? Oh, what is I it? I see. That must be rather... Can you do this quicker at all? Any oh, quicker? Boring. I'm I'm sorry. You know that I, as a turtle, do not talk very quickly. I apologize. <sighs> I was merely wondering if you could tell me a bit about this artifact behind you. And I've I've sort of taken a step back, hoping for him to float in front of the chalice. Um, and I'm yeah. on the opposite side from where um, Carolus is. So he At does, and you can, um, um, uh, you float a little, it floats a little bit closer, and you, uh, hear, uh, or, or he says, I don't know, some angel skull that Kiros defeated at some point, some shit like that. She turned, killed some big, big ass, badass angel, and cut off its head and turned it into a cup. She doesn't like to drink from it, though, apparently, at least not recently. A few thousand years ago, she was all about drinking blood from it and shit, but now, like, it doesn't taste good or something like that. It's weird. Oh, I see. Well, that's quite unfortunate. Um, I wonder why that could be. Um, and I'm just going to try to 
extend the conversation as naturally as I can for as long as I can. As he's doing that, I'm going to start slowly, casually making my way along into the dance, um, positioning myself closer to Careless, but not like on top of his position. Okay. And I'll ask, you know, well, it seems that you've sort of drawn the short straw in terms of patrols. (sighs) Do you think there's a reason for that? Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna take a deep dive into his psyche, <laughs> as much as okay, as much as I can. Um, anything? Uh, he is distracted for at least a bit with that roll. Very, very, very high uh, persuasion roll. What are what is the rest of everyone doing here? I'm hoping that Careless moves towards it so he can pop himself. Wait. Yeah, but I've not got a slight hand. But my idea was. To Just go, to yeet yourself at it. To cu- cu- I was going to cast darkness. <laughs> oh, okay, that works. <laughs> and then do it, but I don't even know if magic works in here. Are you, are you um, saying farewell to Lexi, or are you asking her any more questions, or are you? Um. Yeah, I'd, I'd say farewell to her then, and move over okay. towards. Okay. Well, thank Sarah. you then. Thank you for making him jealous. It's a pleasure. As you move closer, you have dressed sort of like a mage, right? Um, <clears throat> no, my character is actually wearing fine clothes. Oh, okay, cool. <clears throat> and a beautiful cloak. You and Shuma move towards it? Um, I'm not I'm not going <clears throat> straight for the chalice. I'm just sort of like putting myself halfway between where I was and where the chalice is, just closer. Okay. I've got mage hand. Then that gets seen. We need a plan. No, just eat yourself at it. It's fine. <laughs> I, I'm wandering over by the gnome caster. He looked interesting. Ye, ye, we need a distraction. Ye, ye, ye. Do we have a distraction? At, at the turtle point, is the I assume that the horn devil gets tired of my rambling. Is anyone else looking at Eventually, like... you see, even with a very, very persuasive check, more than a few minutes is going to be difficult. So, um, at, at some point, when it seems of... like he's gonna start ending the conversation, I'm going to, um, like go to put my cane under my arm to continue talking and to be able to gesticulate. Um, yeah. and it's going to catch on one of the small pouches that hangs from a hook on my um, oh, no. um, shell, and it's going to spill a thousand ball bearings onto the floor. <laughs> okay. So, oh, I'm, um, I'm so sorry. I t- that, I t- so oh, oh, it dear. starts to rip, and that begins to cause sort of this chaotic chain reaction on the dance floor. But before we get to that, um, I will, uh, we will shift focus over to uh, Mero, who has, um, at the start of things, been wandering over to the gnome, who's kind of sitting there, um, uh, looking not particularly very happy about everything going on. So, um, Please, everyone, roll a history check right now. This would have been some information you would have known at the beginning, but just uh, uh, as you are all taking this in together. <laughs> oh, I rolled a roll three. <laughs> Twelve. Oh, well. I rolled insight. So it'd be, 15, it'd be 15. Carlos would have told you he's a renowned magical mercenary. Seen oh, in the shit. Picture of him. Marrow. So uh, you know that, but anyway, you kind of look at him and he's like, <sighs> actually, I, I go, oh, I open my book and I flip through a page and I show him a picture of him. He's a renowned spellcaster for hire. <sighs> <sighs> what do you want, short stack? Uh, it, this is it, coming from a gnome, by the way, who is here. here. <laughs> Here, here, ah. here. Ah, I'm what is it? I'm standing directly between him and the line of sight of the chalice. <laughs> what is it? Are, are you allergic to something here? 
Are you allergic to devils? I mean, maybe. Demons. I don't know. <laughs> Aberrations. <clears throat> what? I, I just had a curiosity. Uh, your reputation precedes you. Um, oh, yeah? I was wondering, uh, what what exactly does one have to have to hire one such as yourself here in uh, 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 a nervous uh, Avernus? <laughs> Well, I'm pretty valuable. Um, please make a persuasion check. I can do at that. advantage. Ooh. As you have recognized I'm his gonna try to do that. status. 19. Very nice. He seems very pleased that you know who he is and referencing some of the things that um, uh, Caroless has mentioned. <laughs> well, it's pretty damn expensive, you see. Do f- damn fine security. I mean, this 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 thing right here, and he points towards the chalice. It's like, looks pretty normal, right? I mean, it, Look, it's, it, it's sure. This is how you do something, right? Kiros has got her own magic on it. If she's paying attention, at least, if she's not tired out. She, I mean, by the way, she's older than she looks. If you, you know, distract I'm her for not a ages. bit, she'll, she won't notice okay. anything, but... Um, well, she's just not very attentive, but anyway. Someone tried to take that. Boom! Forbiddance. Right there on it. Not only that, boom! Glyph of warding. They're gonna be stuck dancing in place when they touch it. And then more than that, boom! Symbol of insanity. Sorry to be like crazy dancing. Crazy Frozen. dancing insane. Forever. Did you do that? Well, at least until Is they get ripped work? apart by Kiros's mercenaries. Oh yeah, that's my work. And that's, that's your why work? it costs so much. Yeah. But what what, me. what what do you take for currency here? Soul coins are the thing of the realm, but I'd settle for what? a medium sized kingdom on one of the plains. Soul coins are so boring. I mean, everybody has them. I've had a lot of fun with this little coin. You should, well, anyway. I I was just visiting with my buddy Mahadi. I came here with him. And uh, I mean, oh, Mahadi. I, yeah, I mean, I know formerly his Mahadi, but uh, you know, he he's a discriminating person. He's a yes, savvy I've, buyer. Yes, taste. And I can are tell you, you. Are you negotiating on his behalf? No, 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 I'm, 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 no. I'm, I'm a broker of sorts. I put together buyers and sellers uh. and, and acquire things that are needed. Yes. So what's your offer? Well, I, I'm just trying to understand, um, what you, you obviously aren't here for the party. It's, I mean, the music's right. fine, this is but otherwise it's kind of work plain. for me. Yeah. Just, you know, making sure my gestures towards the child, make sure my work holds up. But I'd just love to see someone try it. <laughs> certainly, cer- certainly, there's got to be a way around that. You, <sighs> I can tell you've got a fail safe. I can tell. I mean, that was what I was hired to do. Giras might have some fail saves on it, but I'm, you know. Well, yeah. Um, basically, yeah. Well, they're obviously Kiros has to touch it. Some, so some of the conditions, fiend, you know, fiends can touch it. Alignment based, not lawful evil. That'll trigger it too. So, yeah. Now, now, what, what about uh, what about the emo guy over there looking at his feet? The skull uh, there, the the he's all spooky looking. He looks a little bit less devilish than the rest of these guys. Oh, oh yeah, that one. That's. Uh... That's Hastings. Ah, he's a... Well, he's become a friend. He's another conjurer. He's not nearly as good as me. He's uh, just hoping to court Kiros and get some business, but 
But that's what, what he done. said about you. It, he said that you're not as good as he is. What the hell are you talking about? Did he put his own castings on it too? I mean... No way. No way. You sure about that? You... Hang on a second. And he starts to kind of waddle his way down towards the dance floor and walk over towards Hastings. And you see them. I'll let that happen from a distance. (laughs) So the two are arguing. At this point, a bit of chaos breaks out as marbles and uh, and, uh, ball bearings spread across the floor. Some dancers are um, falling on top of one another and um, unfortunately Lexi the Minotaur as well takes a great spill and you can see uh, Kiros leaning forward and looking now towards the dance floor around the chalice and <laughs> <laughs> just kind of laughing at the chaos question? Yeah. Um, so obviously I don't, I don't know this in character but I want to make sure I understood generally in that conversation was it that if Kira's is paying attention those spells go off or just generally that they go off? Generally, they go off. Okay. Um, they are spells cast upon the pedestal okay. and the, um, the the item itself. I see. Thank you. <clears throat> and he indicated that Kira's also has an alarm spell cast upon her. So if she's and- paying attention and not paying attention to all the other stuff she has going on, she might get notified if she's... Um, Okay. Paying it, paying attention, and the um, it gets taken. On top of I, all I the share other that information really, really way worse stuff. So, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna share that really quickly. What I learned. I will give you guys a freebie to pass information as uh, okay. you guys move about and sort of um, execute your plan here. Well, that goes my plan. Yeah. I, I'm busy very slowly picking up ball bearings one by one and putting them back into a bag and apologizing profusely. I'm, Is I'm this so where the sorry. eating happens? I have no idea what to do. Fuck. Out of character, maybe we can convince the guard to pick it up somehow. Make it seem like it has to be moved because it sounds like if it gets moved, it diffuses all the traps. Yeah. But it has to be done by a fiend. Anything but a fiend or something lawful evil touches it, it will um, unleash some baddie, some bad spells. That includes, like, neutral things that tend to not really care about having alignments? I'm not yes. referring to myself. Okay, never mind. I'm not going <clears> to <throat> break out the cat that I totally have had it with me the entire time. Cats would be like true neutral, right? So, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> just say I'm a fiend. A a it's, a <laughs> it's true, but yeah. Um. Okay. I I won't chuck a cat at it then. Um. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> I'm so close. Well, the only thing I've got is mage hand, but it's not invisible. Um, well, you well, could no do darkness gone... and then Mei Chan. No one's darkness. talked to yeah. the the Sphinx yet, Sphinx. so I'll I'll stop um, laughing at Careless and kind of meander up in that direction. Okay. Um, you hear a um, see it kind of look at you and just <sighs> slump down on its um, little throne-like chaise that it's sitting upon. Not this. your kind of party? Is it yours? I don't really go to a lot of parties. I wouldn't say any kind of party is my party, to be totally honest. But, <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you want? Honestly, I'm kind of curious. You're probably, at least to me, the most interesting thing in the room. Mm, I got a little bored laughing at my friend down there, so figured I'd come say hi. Make a uh, persuasion check. Sweet. (laughs) The secret is, she's not lying. (laughs) 
15. Wow, nice. Um, <laughs> oh, it's not my choice to be here, really. I would love nothing more than to get one back on Kiros here. Oh. I am lament to admit she outsmarted me. And I have to be here, me and all my powers. There's a tomb somewhere I can't really tell you exactly where. If you were to fight through, well, a horde of unpleasant things, and then answer a few of my riddles, you would only have to fight a demi-lich, and then you would have treasure beyond your wildest dreams. But I'm away from that tomb now at this damn ball, sitting here. Zaralice is my name, by the way. It's an honor to be in your presence, Zaralice. Mm. Uh, I uh, can't help but wonder what's your beef with uh, our honored guest. I mean, you know, it, aside from the obvious, you having to be here, but like, that seems well, like Well, isn't story. that enough to be as powerful oh. as me and be compelled? That does seem kind of rude. Yes. What do they have over you? It can't be that bad. Oh, it will never be dispelled. A contract that specifies I'd be at each of these events. Be I only at... have to be here for a few more hours, but me being here is all it specifies. I can do whatever I want while I'm here. But I prefer to just sit. I feel like there's a lot of room within those stipulations to, you know stick one to him, so to speak. What did you have in mind? I mean, there's all sorts of beautiful things here that I'm sure it would really piss him off if, or her off if you uh, fucked around with. I mean, I'll, I'll start pointing out at random things and then the middle of that list, I include the chalice. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. The chalice. Those two stupid imps that sit inside it all the time. The magic runes upon it. I'd love to just roar those all away. You know, I don't think there would be anything more beautiful than to hear that sphinx roar echo through these halls and just burst Kira's eardrums. <laughs> Perhaps if she's distracted, if she saw me doing so, it could be a breach of contract. If she does not, well, send me the signal and I will roar away those imps and blast away that clumsy magic. Aye, aye, Captain. I will, uh, scuttle down towards my friends and I hope that someone can jump into action to uh, distract our dear host. I don't got any thoughts. Go, careless girl. I mean, <laughs> Yeet yourself at her. <laughs> Yeet myself at her? Yeah. Yeet. <laughs> You're doing great with the ladies tonight. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, I got an Oscar for it. Huh? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, let's make it two for two. Yeah, I will cut to Under pressure. Dun, 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 dun. Um, you hear dun, 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 a, um, <laughs> imperious voice sounding in your mind. You step before Her Majesty Archduchess Kiros, slayer of over 10,000 noble souls here in Avernus. Victor of, and it goes on for a few um, long minutes. It's been out, it's been out, yeah. Before she looks at you and says, Beautiful name. Have you come to grovel, mortal? No, it was your party, my lady. I just thought we should be dancing. And I offer up my hand. Ha! <laughs> you would dance with the mighty Kiros. Your body could be crushed, your soul devoured in my very eyes, and yet you offer your flimsy mortal hand. Just thought you may like to dance. I said it, I 
question if you'd like to dance I'd <laughs> love to make a persuasion check <laughs> get it get it get it get it, get it. come on oh, no oh, fuck oh, that was so it. close <sighs> what's up David oh I was gonna ask whether he can get advantage from me making the dance floor look like a ton of fun but he <laughs> rolled before I could ask <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know go for it Roll again. Roll again. Come on. There we go. Ooh. 26. Oh. <laughs> Much better. This, um... Curtis is very handsome. Uh, and she points at you, and you suddenly feel yourself changing. Your body is lifted off of the floor, and it feels suddenly like your rib cage is split apart, and your legs are being torn limb from limb, and suddenly you f you feel immense pain you can't help but cry out in agony and then look down at yourself and you are standing at least twice as tall as you were before seeming to have been magically enlarged and this enormous fiend stands up from her throne sets her sword aside crushes one hand in and then puts her hand on your back Lead the way. I do so. I and as you do you so, you are looking and <laughs> you think oh, you're about to um, step on um, a smaller creature and kind of step around. It's just, no, no, no more of that. And she seems to have a great time with the fact that all of these creatures that are sort of having stumbled down and are prone on the dance floor, she you can see the heel of her boot just smushes the face of one of them, their head popping like a watermelon across the dance floor, and a great smile spreads across her face as you trample the other dances, the other dancers who are flailing on these um, ball bearings. It becomes a bloodbath very quickly under your feet say, this as she is, is amazing. I start in kicking this people. bloody dance. <laughs> I start um, kicking people. As as they're spinning off um, towards one side, I'm going to turn and kind of do a little like to the uh, to the the sphinx. And you hear um, um, the you hear the Andro Sphinx. The mighty voice emanates out. Kiros, I have not seen you so victorious in years. And you feel the magic of his voice and his roar just emanate. You see two imps suddenly are revealed that are kind of sitting in the chalice, rolling dice and playing a dice game, and they flee in terror. And you see some magical symbols pop and dispel as his voice dispels all of the magic in the area, I not including the it. enlargement <laughs> on um, uh, Calculus. I like, I'm sort of like, you know, she, she's doing the, the nasty stuff, but I'm sort of like, like, yeah, sort of like trying to like kick people out of the way, sort of like trying to join <laughs> yeah. in the fun. Yeah. You're trying. Um, you you maybe knock a couple people out too. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, yeah. Swinging, uh, I yeah. start swinging her around and like best party ever. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're um, trying to avoid the bloodbath. She is clearly not. <laughs> At one point, she actually spins around and dips you, and you feel the back of your head um, hit something soft. And you hear, oh! <laughs> kind of, and you feel the remnants of something on the back of your own head. Um, but what do the rest Cannon of you ball? do in this Yeet. moment? Flying um, I Yeet. will run towards the uh, the chalice. Okay. In the commotion, um, and I will try to lift it. I'm going to maintain uh, my focus on keeping this guard distracted by any means necessary. I'll I'll start dropping other things out of my pack if I have to while trying to put these ball bearings away. Okay, um, he comes out. Make one more persuasion check to try to hold his attention because it's been. Um, Has it been more than ten minutes? It's been a lot. Uh, no, we'll say no. Now. You still have your channel okay. divinity active. Okay, so that's gonna be a that's plus five, so twenty-three. Okay, your DC was fifteen. It increased by five to maintain to mm -hmm. a DC of twenty. You've maintained it though. Um, he, uh, I don't. 
what what's going on ah, and he kind of helps pick up some of your items and you can see he's kind of like hits you in the face he's very irritated now like get your shit from behind this cord i'm supposed to keep everything from here and kind of shoves it towards you and is currently trying to do that shuma um, oh, and I, um yeah sorry and uh and uh Meryl, you both okay. are you, you both have actions to do now so I'm going to um, make a grab for the chalice. Yeah. Is it grabbable? Um, yeah, you can get up there and okay. whoa, you can hear some commotion. Um, are you trying to do it a little stealthily or yes. just? I, I, I will try to make it subtle. Yeah, if I can. It's and not a I'm going action. to make an interception, a direct route straight at her so that I would be pass adjacent to her. Okay, so sort of a double pass of sleight of hand kind of thing. All right. Um, Potentially. Cool. All right. Whoever would like to then roll a sleight of hand with advantage. Uh, shall I go for it, uh, Ailey? Um, yeah, that would be you. And, and I'm not proficient in sleight. That's fine. Okay. The action, okay. the, the creativity of it will um, warrant okay. advantage. Wow. 15. 15. Shit um, it is, uh, so most of the, uh, very, very potentially bad, um, DCs are in this are actually 15. You have meat to beaten it, which is okay. what you need for that initial check. So yes, um, you kind of take it and, um, you see, you are immediately stopped in front of three horned devils with um, terrible weapons that kind of stop and look at you. Hands off the... What? And you you just kind of hold up your hands and they're not there. Mm -hmm. Meryl, you have the um. chalice and you seem to be making your way through this chaos unseen with it. Okay, and I am going to go directly between the legs of the giant dancing figures. Oh, God given that they are a size larger than me and I can do so with no penalties whatsoever. <laughs> and I'm going to use their giant legs to help stealth as I cross directly to the other side of the room to get out. Awesome. Okay, make that stealth roll. And it's about at this point, <sighs> <sighs> she tires after you move through and she kind of looks at you and about grabs that. your chin and brings you close, then pushes you away, and you feel your body shrinking. She then puts a foot on top of your chest, and you can feel the breath being squeezed out of you as she leans down and says, let's do this again sometime in 666 years, maybe. Bring me blood of angels, I am tired. And she turns around and starts walking up to the throne. And then um, you see the, then at this point, some of the horn devils go, ah, excuse me, miss, are you? and they start walking up or walking up towards her. Um, go ahead, Shuma. The, the minute they're done looking at me, I'm going to step of the wind and basically book it the fuck out of there um, in the direction <laughs> that Mero went. Um, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, catch I'm holding and, off to make the stealth roll. I'm like waiting. Go yeah. ahead and make the and stealth roll. So yeah. I, I would like to, um, if I can get over towards him, assist in any way I can to keep people distracted, um, watching out for potential uh, either physical or social pitfalls. Well, Mero is going to actually be the help, the most helpful one too, because for all of you to lose yourself within the action and get mm -hmm. out, this will be the final check and it will be a group stealth check. All right. Ooh. Um, okay. DM, I was actually going to not attempt to stealth out okay. with the group. I was going to allow the group to leave without me initially. Interesting. Okay. Um, because I, I plan to offer up my services um, to help determine what happened. I see. Okay. In that case, um, you see the turtle kind of look back and give you all a knowing gaze one who has suffered so often will continue to do so knowing a greater good is being accomplished. And, and not it's in up to direction. the three of you then to get lost. The, with me, obviously I was dancing with the lady, so she knows I couldn't take it. Correct? Yes. 
you get the sense there is going to be a intense crackdown and investigation. Yeah. So, so it's up to you if you really want to stay and feel like you will be safe for the days and weeks that might come of no. questioning and torture and torture and torture, you know, and maybe a little bit of questioning after that. I see. Maybe no questioning at all, but. I do have an idea. And as I'm sort of leaving with Shoma, then yeah. I say, I could put both of us into the bottle and the halfling could carry us out. He's the stealthiest here. Really fucking stealthy. Are you? I'm not. Eh. <laughs> put yourself in the bottle. I'll carry you out. I'll do that then. It's going to be really okay. funny when I roll a one. I zip into the <laughs> bottle and well, I place it into a hand and then I sort of like just... And then whoop, zips into it. Yep. You can stow it away. Yep. All right. <laughs> Shall I make some stealth checks, so Elias? Two of you then need <laughs> yeah. to make a stealth check. Okay. I was just trying to reduce the failure chance. It's good. It's a good idea. Yeah. Same here. All right. <laughs> here we go. I'm just double checking. There's nothing else that I can do. That's what I was. I'm like looking at yeah, everything. Like, like, can I add this? My... Can I do that? Oh my god. Which one of you two's got the best stealth? I have eight. I have better. Yeah, he is better. I'm not surprised. Do you want to put two of us in and one of us carry the thing? He's already got the cut. I don't know if Peter, would you allow that or are we already kind of too separated out here? It's it's up to you guys. Tell me how you're trying to get out. I'm open to creativity. So I'm happy to have Mar I say Marrow hold this and hide. And then Fine. You know grab, what? Let's grab Shoma's hand and we both zip. Leave inside. it to uh we'll leave it to Marrow. <laughs> All right. And um, as we're doing that, I say good luck and I cast guidance on him. Okay. Mero, you have a lot going for you here. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to click the button now. I got 23 it is. You got Plus guided? a D4. Plus a D4. Well, you get a 24, Ooh. right? Because... Actually, yeah. Oh, it's, no, no, never mind. No, it's, it's never already mind. in there. So 23. Yeah. <laughs> 27. <laughs> nice. Come on. You weave your way through the party here and are able to slip out. Um, weirdly, um, as you as you move out, um, suddenly um, you feel a little popping sound and a pair of 10 darts lands at your feet um, as you leave. Uh, whether or not you pick them up is up to you, but you can move on and then you see a... I'll, I'll uh, pick them up quickly. A war machine waiting there with um, Mahadi looking and says, I believe it's time that we probably got out of here. Yes? Yes! And I instantly go into the war machine and then stealthily hide inside the war and machine. And he takes off towards the wandering emporium. You are able to get back there successfully. And the I child Dara die. is waiting for you there. As you all um, present to her the chalice, it's really the first time you've seen her smile and she looks at it and takes it. It's a horrid looking object, a hound skull turned upside down and the engravings on it are all painful and ugly and evil. But she looks at it with love, displays a brilliant smile, and takes it and kisses it on the forehead. And then she takes it with both, both hands and breaks it over the stool that she's been sitting on. The skull the, and the um, bits about it shatter across the ground, and there is a flash of radiant light. Um... And suddenly then the bits of bone start to skitter across the ground, reforming into that same hound skull you saw before. The hound skull floats off of the ground and hovers in midair about eight feet tall. And then you see the shimmering body of a celestial beginning to form around it. And suddenly standing in front of you all is a hound-headed angelic figure broad wings, strong shoulders. This angel 
is standing now before you all in this tent and looks around, <laughs> sniffing the air. And then down at Dara, our child. He sniffs around a bit more. My brothers are still here. Uriel calls for our aid. And then Dara smiles. Her eyes focus off in the distance somewhere in Avernus to something only she can see. And that is where we will end tonight's session. Hooray. Good job, guys. Woo! <laughs>